you play in make believe and it's really nice <laughs> side quest side quest <laughs> that's the name of this show <laughs> Cheers, everybody, to 12 episodes of Side Quest Sats here. A hot dozen. A hot dozen. They said we nice wouldn't do job. it. They sure said, no, no, they'll do a couple of these, then they'll be back recording. Nope. Can't even go to an Apple store. We're all screwed. <laughs> that's, your, that's your measure. That's of your benchmark. Okay. Yeah, I really need to go to an Apple store. The phone doesn't work. Can't, yeah. even, <laughs> can't, can't even go to an Apple store, take a lewd picture of yourself, and set it as the backdrop of the IMAX. How's a man supposed to relax these days? <laughs> that's how I define freedom. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think they said we wouldn't do it. I think they said we shouldn't do it. Uh, that's, that's either way, we prove them wrong. Yeah, that's Important semantics. Clarification. Ah, uh, how is everybody doing tonight? You guys fired up for the season premiere, uh, season finale? I feel like we should have wore suits. <laughs> it's very hot. It's, it's not, very it's hot. Not yeah. suit water. It's not suit water. It's, I was going to say, it's not suit water. It's not suit weather. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Glass Cannon Network presents Side Quest Side Sesh. We have the best technology in the world to bring you the cleanest Christmas streams week in and week out. <laughs> and nothing ever goes wrong because we, we have complete control over everything that happens. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the crispest audio the money can buy. <laughs> and the cleanest bit rates and bit romps that your eyes can feast upon. For this is... A glass cannon network production where everything is <laughs> top notch. Perfect. Chef's kiss. Nothing could possibly go wrong. <laughs> uh, possibly go wrong. <laughs> uh, well, I hope you're all back. Um, if you uh, missed the opening, we did a, a great rendition of the uh, critically acclaimed Side Quest Side Sesh theme song, uh, which great. is now being uh, recorded by uh, Luke Bryan along with um, Kenny Chesney. They're doing a country version of it. I uh, can't believe those two finally got in the studio together. I think they're it, it, took a, it took us to get them in the studio together. And also uh, Drake and Jason Derulo will be doing a hip-hop version. Which mm. I think should be, <laughs> that's going to tear up the, the hip-hop charts. That's the one I'm looking forward summer. to. Most. Song of the Summer is what they're saying. That's what they're saying. Yeah. Um, it's going to be uh, this year's Despacito? I think I'm at this fuzzy side queer sausage. Um, it's going to be but a, I, getting jiggy with it for the 2020. <laughs> Remember DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince? They had that song, Summertime. Right. I could never forget. I love them. Remember you'd uh, have a party, and uh, Matthew, you might not remember this because you don't know what a cassette tape is, but you'd have to make mixtapes of your favorite songs, and sometimes you have to record them off the radio. And so when it was uh, my birthday party happened right at the end of summer, September 4th, feel free to send a card or gift. Um, uh, <laughs> we would make mixtapes, and uh, I remember I was all psyched. My buddy Greg and I, we made this sick mix, and we kicked it off. This was our, we're like, we got to open with summertime. We gotta open with summertime from Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, because it's the end of summer. It's a summer party. They're gonna love it. And I just put it in my grandmother's window, the boom box. You know those <laughs> yellow, yellow sport boom boxes? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Girls playing double dutch. <laughs> and now we'll never see our friends uh, again. Uh, in person. <laughs> you know, you can so, see DJ Jazzy Jeff doing like hours long DJ sessions on YouTube now, and they're actually quite choice. Well, th he's not just Jazzy Jeff, he's a DJ. DJ I, I know. hope he's good. But you I just. Hope the guy's got skills. Uh, he's great. Did you ever try your hand at DJing, Grant? <laughs> no, I know. I, DJ I, Bergy Berg. DJ <laughs> Bergy Berg. I uh, desperately wanted the job of, uh, of DJ at Enterprise City. We had a fake little city <laughs> that all the different schools in Dallas would go to. And, you know, someone would run the sports store and someone would do this job and that job. And you'd learn the value of oh, money and saving. I heard about that. Yeah. I heard about that. And uh, I desperately, I, I wrote a letter, uh, just like a desperate plea to my fifth grade teacher to allow me to be the DJ and like gave it to some, some Chad-like kid, you know, just a real... 
real real jock, real popular kid became the real Chad. And uh, he <laughs> he uh, he took over, and I think I cried when I got home when I wasn't the DJ. And I <laughs> I'm pretty sure I ran the sports store, and I sold like tops baseball cards to people. But no one really wanted them, so I didn't have much money to spend at anyone else's thing. So and I all learned wrinkles from your giant hands. Uh, oh, exactly. Mark McGuire, uh, is this some sort of game? What is? What, what it's is a it? it's a, a social studies class to teach you like how a city and economics work. And boy, did I learn the cold hard lessons of capitalism that day. <laughs> it's like it's basically basically a capitalism indoctrination class. But, but Troy's right, and Mark McGuire is a perfect uh, segue. Uh, I had so much human growth hormone in me as a young 12 year old that they they actually would take it out of my spinal column and send it directly to the oakland athletics and the st louis cardinals <laughs> later to go to the chicago cubs into straight into sammy sosa's ass um it was a beautiful time so for me. About so many things in that sentence yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> well, well hgh they call it the fountain of youth that's what they is say that you, is that how you put, you, put yourself through college mm-hmm. i used to i used to work at a bar I probably shouldn't even tell this story, but there was a, one of the managers, uh, was like, I got a guy coming in. Uh, just let me know if he comes in. And I'm like, well, what is, how will I know uh, the guy? Is he going to ask you? He's like, he's a guy that looks shady. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> let me know. So this guy comes in tank top in June. It's like, uh, so, so here. I'm like, uh, yeah, hold on. And, uh, so we had this bag and, uh, I saw him go around the back, hand the guy a bunch of cash. And then he comes back and I'm like, what, what is that? And he's like, it's uh, it's HGH. Oh no! I, like, <gasps> I don't know if I'm going to use it, but <sighs> I like the idea of it. They say I found my youth. <laughs> so if you learn anything tonight, just remember uh, Street HGH. Take it, and you might live forever. You're here first from the Glass <laughs> Cannon Network. Street HGH. You might live forever. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, at a, I'm, at, I'm at a loss for how to respond to that story. <laughs> Matthew, if you're not taking street HGH, you're not living. Where, well, I mean, all right, I'm going to try to like skip ahead several things to get to the point where he hands somebody a wad of cash and then says, I'm not sure I'm going to use it. Yeah, that yeah. seems that seems <laughs> like yeah, a half truth. Why did you buy $950 worth of HGH if he's just going to let it spoil on the shelf? For company. You have it around for company. Put a yeah. little dish on the coffee table. You have a party. Watch Matt about you. Wasn't that would funny, like a, uh, w- Would you like uh, some cream or some clear? I, we have both. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you're looking nervous tonight. Are you afraid we're going to out you for your former HGH use? You look really <laughs> I was like, can we get off this topic? <laughs> like, it was stressing me out. That was, a very, that was a very short 17 months, and I was very young. <laughs> right. My lawyer was very clear about it. Don't talk it's about four, it on Twitch. Four cycles. These cases are sealed. <laughs> I just Grant. I told you to watch. Uh, who's the what, uh, the guy? The Greek that uh, flies for the sun. Icarus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you see? Did you ever watch the doc? Yanni. Icarus doc. Mm. Uh, it's just so great, and it's about like HGH and that kind of stuff and doping, and it's just so awesome to have oh. people that are like really inside be like because it's documentary. It's inside. It's kind of off the record, but not really, obviously. And they're just like. They're all doping. Yeah. Everybody. And it's just such a like matter of fact. <laughs> it's just like, ooh. <laughs> Did you hear the story that came out today? A U.S. woman's boxer from the Olympics tested positive for steroids, and she said she got it from unprotected sex. And the, uh, <laughs> and the uh, International Olympic Committee was like, all right. Yeah. We're going to let this one go. They, they totally said it's fine. <laughs> wow. Okay. Prove it wasn't. It's like I I, I didn't know that was possible, but how can we check? That's what's gonna happen. Means of injection. Next time, have to run some tests. Get over here, sir. (laughs) Next time I get pulled over for a speeding ticket, I'm gonna be. I'm sorry. I was having unprotected sex just a moment ago and had to hit the pedal as hard as I could. (laughs) Get along. Get out of here. Wait, aren't (laughs) you (laughs) cheating, (laughs) Bergy (laughs) Berg? Rips up the ticket. Skid, did you move? You look like you're in the country. I'm actually uh, in the environs of uh, beautiful Knoxville, Tennessee. Ooh. Uh, you survived the flight. I've never I did. Been. Two flights. Two, two completely packed flights, by the way. Wow. And connected through uh, Charlotte, uh, which was also as crowded as New Orleans or Mardi Gras. And uh, I'm here, and it's fine. 
Everybody was wearing masks, though, right? Many people were. <laughs> Many oh, people God. were wearing masks. <laughs> A very solid exciting. Six, very six, excited for the percent. future of our great nation after after experiencing that. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Matthew. Matthew, I'm surprised you're not wearing a mask on these streams. <laughs> <laughs> who knows what comes you through know? Discord? I don't know. Do you know? Who else, who else has used this mic? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, maybe your wife has like a secret Matthew story podcast that she records late at night after you sleep. Matthew stories. I mean, no? I mean that could happen, but also like it's not... I, I probably if she ha if she is going to expose me that has probably already happened. Yeah, that's true. I just really want to go down the line of what the audience is for a Matthew Stories late night podcast. And I, I really don't think it would be that large. I don't think I'm that interested. Yeah, I'd want to know would that insult you if not a lot of people listen to the Matthew Capitacasa tell all or bought the the tell all book about you if it didn't become. No, I'd, be very, I'd be surprised that that many people were interested. Okay, I think people want to know <laughs> the real you, the man behind the beard. I'm pretty straightforward. This is the this is, is pretty much the real me. I don't know, that's, I don't know if that made that it's abundantly clear. Pretty much clear the real me. There's a darkness <laughs> there behind that cracked voice and fake. I mean, shit. I'm not. I'm not two different people. I don't know. I can't think of how <laughs> how anyone would live such a, such a life, <laughs> such good. a double life. Can't even good, picture it. I can't. Good seg. <laughs> can't even interestingly <laughs> portray it. Yeah, I don't have any of the knowledge that would be useful to uh, to act it, yeah. as you might say. Yes, right. that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can't mm. draw from ex real experience. Uh, yeah, I don't, to, uh, I'd have to use the magical if. Yes, no, there's no no Meisner for you um, in portraying your character tonight. Uh, I'm fired up about tonight. I think uh, it is it is going to be uh, as I tweeted out earlier, uh, an all time classic glass cannon sesh. It is truly the end of a module. But all ends are also beginnings. Not for the four of you so much as your new characters in the next module we play. <laughs> oh, man. I've gone as far to... Well, I really didn't have a lot of choice here because having read how, uh, you know, how this has been a, a pretty lethal module, uh, I had to prepare for both. So I actually have two totally separate endings uh, depending on what happens, as well as like a third half ending uh, that's kind of like a, got to call him the third ending, wasn't expecting him. Uh, so I'm really interested to see how this all plays out. And uh, I'm Do kind of have pulling for one ending. Oh, I was just going to say, let's say there's ending A, ending B, ending C. Do you have a favorite, personally? <sighs> I, it's the type of thing where like, I feel like if ending A happens, I, I'll do it. And then like, I'll still... I'll still on air tell you what ending B was. Oh, oh nice. It's nice. my favorite. It's my favorite ending. Now, if ending B happens, you'll never know what it, ending A was. Is one you of can figure out what ending A was. Just out of curiosity, like asking for a friend, is any are any of these endings uh, accounting for a possible TPK? Ending B uh, would not be something any of you would enjoy, but I would get a, a real big kick out of it. And the, <laughs> right. and the, the listening audience, <laughs> the people at home, uh, they would they would love it. Sitting at the couch with their HGH watching yeah. <laughs> side quest side dish, they would get a real kick out of it. Um, so uh, I, I'm I'm excited, a little nervous too. Uh, I this is one of those ones where like I feel like just you just got to kind of jump in, see what happens, and uh, and hope for the best. Um, I'm I mean, excited. we were talking a little bit before we went on air, and uh, we just pulled up the map on Roll20, and I was like, oh, right. I don't know how we're going to get out of this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I looked at the map, and I, uh, I had Joe's uh, words echoing in my mind today while I was prepping. He was like, can we just see the whole map? <laughs> Let's see the map! <laughs> and I was like, no, I really like seeing uh, these... Uh, Spirals. I think they look really cool. I like that you can't see everything, so I decided to just clean it up a little bit and make it look nicer. Um, but yeah, this uh, arena. You know, you still see spirals, right? If it's not there, <laughs> you still see the exact same spiral. Uh, it just looks better. Is all the only the only difference? Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't really think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Are they not all spirals of corn? Oh, <laughs> what? Is this free open area for us to fight? Oh, no. I'm afraid I've got like. I feel like I have tokens and stuff or in like notes hidden in the, in yeah. The, you know, do they put like, <laughs> oh, I've done that. that. Fog of war? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got a token like, well, this fog of war won't get opened anytime soon. And I just oh, have something like, there. DR 15 magic. Like, oh, God. I didn't mean that. <laughs> that, was, uh, that happened. Uh, that, note from my that, Uncle that happened in Echo Quest. Remember? 
<laughs> it's like I revealed a room oh, and yeah. you're like, what I'm concerned about is that green <laughs> robot in the back of the room. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. Pay no attention to the robot. Yeah. That, <laughs> there's no robot in the back of the room. <laughs> Wait, yeah. that, didn't that also happen? Oh, it happened on Androids. It happened on Androids, and I tried to roll with it, and then oh. it got exposed, and Troy was so mad. Troy blamed oh, that even my fault. Was that was a roll twenty. Clearly, problem. is there? Get out of here! No, that was all roll twenty. I will go. Uh, I will go to the grave with that. <laughs> oh, I'm still mad about it. If I could figure out fantasy grounds, I'd switch in a heartbeat. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, what what were you saying? Spirals. Like, Spiral, spiral sticky wickets. Spiral. The Mad spiral man. ham for dinner tonight. It was delicious. I had it. Oh, spiral cut ham. I think like Samantha made it ham. just to kind of like uh, be on theme tonight because I know she watches every ep. She's Is it like, Easter already? It's just spiral ham. Uh, we were in a ham mood. Um, anyways, uh, I was going to say as excited as I am about this, and I'm very excited about this. I told you guys before we even started this, what a module. And I think it's lived up to the hype. And after tonight, when all shall be revealed... I think you'll see, wow, home run module. You know what might be better than this module? What? The next one we're starting next week. <gasps> what? <laughs> what? Have you even it? chosen it? Oh, have I already loaded all the maps to roll 20 and started putting pawns in and read it twice? I don't know, Skid. Have, have you? <laughs> yes, yes, I have. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. It is. I picked it about uh, a week and a half, two weeks ago, and... Uh, I'm, I'm in deep. I'm in deep. I was trying not to get too deep, so I put it away. I, I was reading a little bit this morning while I was having my coffee. I'm like, all right, I got to switch focus to Feast of Ravenmoor, which is the first time I've said that on air. As we're playing Feast of Ravenmoor, and tonight is the last sesh, sesh 12. Take away the first sesh and the two with Mona. This might have been a nine sesh mod. Nine <laughs> sesh mod. Oh, man. I wonder if uh, the next one will be. Oh, man, the next one. I'll say this, and I'll say it again next week. And if you don't, if you don't sh- pull yourselves together, I might say it again the following week. It involves like three or four things that we've never done on the network. <gasps> never done on the network. Really? Subject matter. Wow. Areas of Galarian. Jet skis. Shit that's <laughs> going to go down. Never happened on the network. I've already said too much. The hype train is rolling into the station, and we're about to get to the feast. I thought, you, we, I thought we already had the feast. I thought the oh, feast. Did we, Matthew? Oh, no. This oh. is feast I've been waiting for. Did we? <laughs> oh, no. I, I, don't, I guess I don't know. And now I feel uncomfortable. I want you to feel uncomfortable. I want you to feel a little, little tingling in your beard hairs. <laughs> right where they Done. meet, your, right where they oh, meet no. your soft cheek. <laughs> <laughs> a cop, mission a cop for, for mission a cop. <laughs> if I were to honey I shrunk the Troy down to a very small size that I could climb into the forest that is your beard hairs with a little tip of a pencil used as a machete cha, like I was please. in the Amazon cha. please stop cha. <laughs> Just walking along your tender cheek I say this with love, but I already have enough of you in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want a tiny version of him crawling around oh, on your face. What's that? Is that a freckle? <laughs> no, I'll, no time. Might be a quicksand. Let's keep moving. Yeah. <laughs> I kept walking on that face of yours. It's an Aaron might, crumb of Gabagool. I might, I might see in the distance a hill, and atop that hill, a copter. And I hop in that copter, and I push the throttle forward because I'm sure that's how you drive copters. <laughs> I take right it into, into the, the air. Let's <laughs> go right into his nostril. Yeah. <laughs> Just to backtrack, this is a also a tiny copter, right? It's a very tiny copter, yeah. but then okay. I drive it back to the Honey I Shrunk the Troy Ray, click it into reverse, and it brings me back up to full size. And I say, Matthew, grab my hand. Like Sylvester Stallone in that movie where he says, grab my hand. Cliffhanger? And Cliffhanger? You grab my, yeah, and uh, and you grab my hand, I pull you on the copter, and then we pull by Grant and Skid and Joe, we pick them up too, and we go driving onto this fun train tonight. We're in the darkness. <laughs> the in now the, now the copter is on the train. Yes. Yeah, and then the speakers okay. blare. You flip the switch, and the speakers gl- blare like an apocalypse now. But as I was walking on Matthew, and I found out, out, out. <laughs> imagine like an action movie, the copter lands on the train, moving. 
120 miles an hour and both of us go through uh and all of a sudden in the darkness we hear sounds of a child whimpering <laughs> and slowly the lights come up on that child crouched uh huddled together almost in a fetal position curled up against a cave wall the four of you slowly walk towards her passing by the now disemboweled corpse of a werebear. And that young girl looks up at you ever so slowly, ever so deliberately, with nothing but fear in her eyes. And as the four of you stand near this makeshift altar in the middle of this corn maze in Ravenmore, a young woman arches her back and turns her head ever so deliberately, ever so slowly, and regards you with that same look of abject fear. Alfonso, you were pulled away from the mayor's mansion in the night with the hopes of a late night tryst with Shell Lepescu. It was Never. a setup. It was a setup, either way. We'll never know what you would have done. But her, just along with talked. her parents, just talked. Had some wine coolers. <laughs> some Zima. <laughs> just see what happens. Her, she, she, along with her parents, jump you in the night. Luckily, the crystal ghost arrives right in the nick of time, followed by Karazor and then Brave. A naked, Brave. A naked Karazor. A naked Karazor, excuse me. And then as the battle ends, Braven shows up. Slash Grant. It's safe. It's a safe thing to do. <laughs> it's safer to show up after the battle. Yeah. Braven walks up just as the Crystal Ghost is pulling her uh, rapier out of the gut of Shell Pescu. You continue forward into the abandoned farmhouse. You're attacked by more cultists. You're attacked by the weaver who transforms into this spider creature known as a Aranea. You find this shrine to Glondur. They're not worshippers of Desna. They're worshippers of the Gossamer King, Glondur. You're attacked by these uh, mutant-looking creatures housed in a barn full of uh, fetal skeletons and bones and more uh, awful shrines. You enter the corn maze, and you're attacked by a mosquito swarm, and then you're attacked by Leonard Kriegler, who was not a Kriegler brother. He was, in fact, a faceless stalker. Then you keep winding around this corn maze till you find the middle and you see 20 or so of these townspeople naked as the day they were born, their clothes laying all along the ground. But instead of clothing, they are coated in a thin layer of mosquitoes clinging to their bodies. They look like they're on another planet. They're just like, take off your clothes and join us. Ugh. I guess I didn't realize they were naked. Yeah, all their clothes are all piled up. I assume they clothes had everywhere. a layer underneath the the robes and the mask. You assume wrong. This is R rated. Yeah. It's late night. <laughs> Unless you're on the West Coast. In which case, this is very inappropriate for that time zone. <laughs> this is not dinner table talk. One person has clothes on. A white robe. A white robe that would match his pristine, crisp white suit that he first greeted with you with when he came out of the Kriegler Manor. It is Mayor Andretti Kriegler. He's holding a spear over the body of this woman who has arched her back and looked at you with this fear, like, save me. Another one of these women, like Shel Lupescu, who was uh, in contention to be the Founder's Feast Queen. As the cultists just kind of uh, chant away, the mayor sees you. He looks more annoyed than angry, is how I put it, I believe. And he says, travelers, you caught me in an inopportune time. I invite you to cast aside your weapons and your, no doubt, false beliefs and join us. 
And then he just starts slowly lifting the spear up and continues on. Says, that which sleeps within must still be fed. And the crowd is like, that which sleeps within must still be fed. What do you do? Um, Alfonso is going to step forward. Stop this! Stop this now! Uh, he'll step past Karazor. Uh, or Karazor come off to the right. And he'll just try to break it up vocally. He's got his weapon in his hand. He's standing there trying to interrupt the mayor from his uh, chanting. Young man, I ask you, do not interrupt me any further. Do not interrupt this ritual. Only blood can contain this land's nightmarish corruption. Only blood can contain this nightmarish corruption. Does all these chants echo around you from these people covered in mosquitoes? There must be another choice. If it is only blood that will satisfy this land, then leave this land. If you must stay and spill your own blood, not the blood of an innocent girl. Does anybody else say anything? Uh, Karazor standing beside Alfonso now, and he says, You know, I, I realize now that I've been extraordinarily rude to many of you as I've been here. I've pointed out how ignorant, dirty, and low you were, how you are beneath even uh, even uh, the, the dirtiest beggar's contempt. But I see now that I was, in fact, far too generous. And <laughs> if you don't stop this now, my friends and I are going to kill you and cut off your genitals. <laughs> <laughs> Put simply... <laughs> Crystal Ghost. <laughs> the Crystal Ghost will step forward as well uh, and say, Alfonso is right. If you must sacrifice innocent lives to maintain yours, then yours is not worth saving. Stop this or prepare to die. And then what Karazor said. <laughs> <laughs> The genital thing. <laughs> the genital yeah. thing. The that happens thing, yeah. second. <laughs> Don't do it. I've seen I think we're it all happen. We're all on board with the genital thing. Just, oh, uh, yes. You saw me a man's penis? Yeah, it was international waters. So. Oh, I've done it. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with hyena behavior, but Noel behavior is quite similar. And, 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 and quite fond of it, actually. You don't want to have to see it, let alone feel it. It's truly... Well, it's a spectacle, to say the least. <laughs> oh, it's Brave. a scene, man. <laughs> Taven, do you say anything? Braven steps forward through the people. Before we get to all the genital stuff, I gotta ask you a question, Mayor Kriegler. <laughs> He's just still holding the spear, slowly raising it up, but he looks at you and regards you. Did you give Elias Kyle the same offer before you buried him underneath the ground to rot with all of the other bodies next to the effigy to the grotesque god of pestilence you worship. Mr. Kyle was sent to us just as you were, and you are all the perfect specimens as unbelievers, non-believers of our faith. You have been sent, not unlike he, to show us the true meaning of belief in the Gossamer King. But I am warning you for the last time. Let me finish this ritual. For the salvation of one, this young girl that you choose to try and save will doom all to starvation. And I will not see that happen. I will not see that happen as the mayor of this fair town. And I will not see that happen as a follower of the Gossamer King. Starts raising the spear up. This hypocrisy, it should not be tolerated. Not by any of you. He's yelling to the crowd. This double talk that you do, acting as if it is us who interrupts your ritual, acting as if 
it is us who, and our friend Elias Kyle who come into this place to challenge your beliefs. It is you who have brought us here. It is your choice. You could simply do your despicable, depraved rituals among your people. Have the religion you want to have uninterrupted. Bleed the ground red and eat of its bountiful harvest and never be interrupted. If you would just pay your fucking taxes. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't. And even when they sent someone to tell you his problem, you continue to ignore it. You don't file a fucking return. Of course people are going to come around asking questions. It is you that have brought this upon yourself, and I have no sympathy for you, or anyone who backs you. This girl is not going to be stabbed, and I assure you before that spear falls, I am much faster than I look. My rapier will be through your heart before you, your blade falls, your spear falls. <laughs> That's tough. Talk. I really screwed up at the end there. <laughs> it, was it was so good. good. It was so good. <laughs> I'm guessing too on the intimidate. You were like uh, Mary Lou Retton or someone not sticking the landing on a gymnastics routine. <laughs> yeah. It was like right, perfect so flips. Mary Lou Just like crushing it, crushing it. <laughs> Name me one time Mary Lou Retton. I know, I, I couldn't. Landing. I couldn't think of. Oh, I don't know. Losers who didn't win gold medals. <laughs> So Bob she popped those into are, my head. Those are teenage we, girls that you're just. I know, I know, and it, it's awful. Not anymore. <laughs> They're adults. They know what, what's coming. Uh, and we, it's a since it's a fantasy. Um, it's not. Can we real. assume that he said it uh, smoothly and intimidatingly? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's pretend. Yeah, yeah, because he was like pulling for you at the end, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. You hate uh, to see that. You know, <laughs> to see him. you hate to see fall that. apart in their intimidation. <laughs> This is why I don't like watching it. Try, try that again. <laughs> Let me run that back. <laughs> Give me that last part one more time. <laughs> Line! <laughs> Line. <laughs> we do not have time for your bureaucratic nonsense. This woman dies today. And if you try to interrupt me, you will join her. There is plenty of room for sacrifice. You cannot win. There are too many of us. Drop your weapons or walk away. I'll happily give you your money in the morning. But right now, you're being quite rude. Um, one, one uh, point of order, one question. Uh, yes, I'm, you in the back. Thanks. Um, just like, bear with me. I'm not, say, a professor of anthropology. I don't have the requisite knowledge to understand what's involved with all of this. He nods. But I have a friend who would be most very close interested. Friend. A very close friend. She would... She's just a simple costumed vigilante. Now, yes. please bear in mind, but she does have this friend. <laughs> Carry on, sorry. So, so before we continue with what will inevitably be a very unpleasant negotiation, would you mind summarizing briefly what's happening here and why? For academic purposes, not mine, my friends. No, oh, yes. I, I'm actually quite curious, too. I'm glad you raised the point. It would be nice to have something to mull over while I'm chewing on your testicles. And then, <laughs> then, then, then we can get to the genitals thing. Then we get to the genitals thing, yes. This woman is to be sacrificed in Glander's name. And without that sacrifice, we will not be assured a fertile harvest. And I... And he stops for a second. I will not be assured of a f fertile. No matter. <gasps> this happens now. No. Wait, 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 wait. He raises uh, the spear up. Ah! Oh, yeah. I'm going to go no. stab him if he's going to. Roll for yeah. initiative. All okay, right. all right. Stab this dude. Oh, man. So, uh, you know, I was wondering this. I was wondering this. I kind of wanted to bring it up. Uh, it's like, where's the next generation of Krieglers? How come we don't see uh, this being passed down? He's well, kind the of first, 
the first two seasons of The Next Generation are pretty terrible. You could just skip them all together. But you skip to the third, it's pretty good. <laughs> watch, wait, watch Measure of a Man. And Measure then... of a Man is, is very good, yes. One of the exceptions. <laughs> Braven, what do you got there, buddy? Uh, total? Uh, that's what you want, right? So that's a seven. No, just give me the, the uh, at raw. Just the modifier. That's a, yeah, the, just... that's a, that's a, that's a seven. <laughs> Seven, just okay. the modifier. <laughs> it's a just plus modifier, four. And I'll make That's up a plus the four. Of <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carzor. Uh, Carzor. <laughs> Carzor got a fourteen. For <laughs> the time, I was like, I think it was with Grant too. I was like, "What's your roll?" And you were like, "What initiative?" And I was like, "No, a swim check." <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do remember that. I remember no, that very clearly. Check. I remember that. Uh, Alfonso. Uh, 19. Ribeiro. Uh, 19. Crystal Juice. 22. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. You guys have been uh, the Bobsy twins with initiative lately. <coughs> really uh, high in the 20s together. All right. <laughs> this is the scene here. You got 20 or so cultists uh, that right as this like crescendo of him starting to bring down the spear and all of you jumping to action happen, they immediately, immediately, as all of you are like, ah, come to arms, they begin shrieking and bobbing back and forth, their eyes uh, fixed to the sky and crying out. You can kind of only make, hear parts of it, but it sounds like they're saying, Glonder, come and save us from the heathens. They're all overlapping each other. Glonder, come and save us from the heathens. Come and save us from the heathens. Sounds like a Baptist church. Ah. Um, so that's all happening around you as this begins. He's about to bring this spear down and the crystal ghost axe. Uh, yes. Great. Okay, the crystal ghost is going to slip between cars or Braven, dash over and slip Ooh. around the uh, the pyre there yep. and uh, right next to the mayor. Where he is flat-footed, um, he won't uh, get an attack of opportunity there. I was counting on it, and I'm going to power attack, take a swing with my uh, crystal <laughs> liquid, my liquid glass longsword. Yeah. Natty 18. Oh! 24 to hit. Oh, that's oh. Not dead. That's, oh uh, dude. That's hit. it! A looks palpable like, hit. Looks like we're headed for ending A right now, suckers. Yeah, ending A. Didn't roll great for damage. 10 points of damage. Okay. I've seen worse damage uh, from our next player, Joe Bryan. Joe Bryan. So was he properly interrupted in his uh, like ritual thing, or is he like? Does he look like he's continuing through with the motion? Despite the way I think of it is like no one's surprising each other. Like he went to do that, and before he could do that, everyone acted. So you and the Crystal Ghost have a chance to interrupt him when it comes to his turn. Maybe he'll follow through with it, or maybe okay. he'll defend himself. All right. Well, in, yeah. I'm, basically, what I'm asking is: Is he out of that action? Like, did that knock him away from her at all? If not, here's what I want to do. I want to sidle up. Wait, you moved through the fire, right, Crystal Ghost? Yeah. I mean, I figured I was squeezing. Let me ask you this, Troy. Mm -hmm. Where would I need to see? Here's what I want to do. I basically want to get into position to, uh, and this is kind of like against the rules, I guess, but I think it might be fun. Uh, I already like it. What, what if I got into position and uh, readied an action to do an opportune parry if he comes down at her? And then it's just I roll against his roll. Oh, because if like, I hit him, he might like still run through the girl. Yeah. So to like knock aside the spear, I'm using my action to do that. Right. And if he chooses to just attack the crystal ghost, I waste my turn. Well, this is what I what I can tell you is that action was coming down when the crystal ghost stabbed him. It interrupted the action. Now okay, that doesn't right. mean that doesn't mean on his next action he's not going to attack her. But the spear isn't coming down as you step up. He has been okay. interrupted in his flow. All and right. He'll do whatever he wants uh, on his action. Right. Um, That's all I'll tell you. Okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to I'll, I'll try to hit him then. So I'll do the same thing the crystal. Well, yeah, I'll do the same thing the crystal ghost did is slip in, flank him, and try to stab him and hurt him enough to take the attention away from stabbing down at the girl. Uh, Nineteen to hit. Nineteen is a hit. 
Excellent. Uh, for oh, excelente. Five Hello. points of damage. Five points of damage. <sighs> All right. Okay, he is going to um, go now, uh, as is tradition. He's going to take a five-foot step back and attempt to cast defensively. Uh oh! See oh what no! His, Look at ourselves. See what his concentration check. Elcaster. He's a mayor. I I predict charm person. <laughs> uh, all right, made the concentration check, um, and just. <laughs> He casts this uh, spell on himself, and you just see this sickly black light sort of envelop his body. And it, like, boom. You almost see, like, boom, like shades of insects boom, surrounding him, boom, around his body. Um, he casts that and uh, stands in position. It is now uh, Carnosaur's turn. Akarizor. Akarizor is going to take a five foot step closer to the sacrifice. Uh, and he's going to pull out his oil of magic uh, weapon out of his pouch as a move action and apply it to his blade as a standard. And ah, ah, now I'm ready to cut some cocks. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> don't hold back, Skip. Oh, boy. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I've never felt a more opportune time to say praise log. <laughs> <laughs> right. You'll get your chance. May all logs be smooth. Uh, Braven, uh, you are up. Karizor has stepped up, applied some sort of oil on his weapon. Do the bonfires next to this uh, sacrificial person uh, appear to be endangering anyone? The corn, like, will it catch on fire? Will it hurt her? Will it endanger the corn? You noticed, right? I I don't want these people to starve. Uh, You noticed right when you came in, uh, I think I even made mention of it, that everything was sort of damp. There was a dampness to everything, so much so that you don't think the corn uh, would be able to catch fire. Um, But, uh, yeah, if you're... Stand in it that would hurt, and then obviously, like Matthew said, you're squeezing to get by it. So, in that moment, your AC is lower. Okay, so I'm going to immediate action pull uh, my shroud of water across myself to give myself that shield bonus. I'm gonna squeeze shield bone, little shield bone. Uh, you uh, may take an attack of opportunity if you wish as I blast straight at the mayor heedlessly. Oh my god, I would love to. Okay, uh, let's see. Probably not. 15 to hit. Miss. He just boom, goes out with the spear. All right. Here it comes. Natural 20. Oh! oh! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Before you confirm that 20, I need you to do me a favor. Uh-huh. And roll a will save. Oh, no. Oh. Some sort of dark... Uh, what's it called? Sanctuary? Sanctuary. Sort of dark yeah. sanctuary. Yeah. yeah 19. Uh, uh, 19. Uh, 21. Of course. Of course. Yep, that is a uh, critical threat. (laughs) He did, in fact, cast Sanctuary on himself. uh, And you beat the DC, so you can attack as normal. Roll to confirm. Come on. Uh, Good Lord. Uh, This is going to be so bad. One second. Allow me to... Are you you doing a a ranged attack? Yeah, just right next to him, though. Okay. Uh, Is that still going to take a minus four? If I'm right next to him and in melee with him myself, it's up to you. I'm sure rules is written. I, I, I think rules is written. Ver- he's in uh, where he's in uh, melee combat, uh, melee with your allies, and it's still minus four. Yeah. Okay, that's really stupid considering I'm right next to him. But I'll I'll, I'll, I'll bite. Um, magic, magic is vol- magic is volatile, man. Uh, Gotta be careful, man. Uh, hold on. Yeah, one. they might hit your friends. You might hit one of those fires you were so worried about. I was worried about those. You're right. Here it comes. Uh, to confirm a 19, a fucking 19. Oh, uh, so that's a 21 to confirm. That is a confirmed crit. <laughs> <laughs> this die, I got to, again, pull a skid here. It is for all your uh, random number generating needs from Norse North Foundry. Foundry. That North is uh, Foundry. a cool 50 to direct relief uh, for that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, baby. Round one crit of the night. Hot 50 to direct relief. Let's get plenty more crits tonight. Uh, this one 
from Rob McFadden in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. What's up, dude? Cherry Hill. Uh, Cherry Hill. Right on their cap, Otakasa. <laughs> your missile, your <laughs> missile strikes the top of your target, no matter their height, and knocks them over. Double oh. damage, and your target is knocked prone. Reflex save negates the prone condition. Hey, gross. So, double damn zony and a nice. possible prone alicious. What do you got? This is exactly what happened to Leonard. Uh, it is. The, uh, well, he didn't get a save. The DC is your, uh, whatchamacallit? Your confirmation, confirmation roll. 21. 21. DC 21 reflex. No. Uh, so <laughs> I fail. Encounter over. So, oh God. So and he he falls prone and takes double damage. And as yeah, he falls prone, prone, he hears a sound of rushing water as if he's underneath a giant waterfall. And you see elemental power surging through the veins of Braven like you've never seen before as he unleashes a torrential downpour that does 30 points of damage. (laughs) It's okay because I feel like I feel like the mayor is not what they're keeping at bay and there might be something that uh, comes after this, but that's a little bit metagamey. I will see. So I mean, he, he gets hit and he's just like dum, 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 enough so that he hits the ground and he's just soaked. Uh, his robes are soaked through uh, and you can see that he's wearing nothing underneath. It's completely see through and very inappropriate. Uh, but he you is make an easy target, Karazor. Prone and he is very much an easy target. Uh, at that moment, uh, a couple of these cultists come out. One uh, comes after Karazor. One comes after the Crystal Ghost uh, and takes swings uh, to protect Mare and Dredda Kriegler. With sickles? With Did we sickles. see them armed? Were they, they had sickles? Uh, actually, no. They would have uh, grabbed them, picked them up, and walk to you, uh, so that would be their action for both of them, because neither of them had sickles. So they just grab a nearby sickle uh, and stride towards you. I don't think they can do that as part of a move action, because that picking it up off the ground isn't quite like drawing it, right? You know, right. Like and if it was on the ground, scoop, unless it was yeah. hanging off, like pick it up, move action, mosquito sheath, walk to you, move action. Uh, none of the ones. Uh, oh, actually, no. The one. Yeah, this one here next to Crystal Ghost will take a swing. <clears throat> Very low chance to hit. Natty two, so just swa- misses uh, a little bit. Uh, it is top of round two. Uh, the mayor, mayor, mayor got hurt by that critical magic water. <laughs> uh, so it is the crystal ghost turn. Uh, the crystal ghost is going to try to stab down at the mayor. Uh, I got to roll my save though, right? Uh, yeah, roll the hit first. Roll the hit first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Power attack, and I get a plus four because he's prone. Is that how it works? Yeah, n- no, his AC is just four. His lower, AC so is four. Yeah. Okay. Do a range attack. Uh, that <laughs> is a twenty-four to hit. Nice. <laughs> yes. Now roller will save. Oh my okay. God. Uh, seventeen will save. Seventeen is a pass. Okay. <laughs> uh, Twelve points of damage. 12 points of damage, uh, and the mayor collapses to the yeah! ground. <laughs> I mean, he's already, he's already, he's already collapsed to the ground. You just, like, he hits the ground from yeah. the water damage, and you, not unlike what you did to Shell Lepescu, just rah, run him through. And what kind of weapon are you using? I said rapier, but that was Alfonso. It is a liquid glass longsword. Right. Liquid glass longsword. Uh, you hit him, and he, like, puts his hands up to block it, and it goes right through. Hits him right in the stomach, and he's like <laughs> clutching in his stomach as his insides are starting to come out. The cultists that have been bobbing back and forth, their eyes fixed to the sky, uh, shouting, crying out. They all turn now to look at the mayor because they hear his anguished cries. He's just ah, shrieking in pain. And then you see just him stare directly in your eyes the crystal ghost and the light goes out and he stops and then all of a sudden not unlike that pig (gasps) that you saw his body started 
thrashing about, just starts thrashing about in a fit. And then suddenly he just bursts open in a shower of gore as this mosquito-like monstrosity crawls out into the world. (sighs) You see its wings like a newborn uh, butterfly just like starting to stretch. It looks like a sturge on steroids and it just... I think uh, I think we're just gonna keep rolling here, oh. and this is what I need all of you to do. Jesus. I need all of you to roll a will save. Oh no! Oh, oh gosh! Oh no! Crack die. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a bottle cap on this will. Oh, I have a bottle cap too. I'll throw. Oh, we're using caps. <sighs> Got to use caps. That's I think. when you know I don't it's know bad. What this is, but like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay. Uh, plus five for the cap, right? Or uh, no, no. Uh, d- bit of luck. Bit roll of luck. twice. Okay. No. <laughs> Come on, O'Brien. Literally rolled the exact same thing. Oh no, <laughs> good or bad? Uh, it, it wasn't. It's not great. <laughs> not great, Bob. <laughs> not great, Bob. Uh, that is a uh, a, a twelve. For the oh, oh no. Desna would be proud, huh? A little bit of luck, a bit of suck. That is a big old <laughs> fail. Uh, what'd you get there, Grant? Uh, an eight. Oh, that's oh, that is oh, also oh. not uh, not good. Nope. <laughs> My modifier is a plus two for the record. Here comes ending B. Here ending comes B. ending B. You can feel uh, it warming up. Skid, you got that uh, Knoxville luck in you. I think so. A natty 16 for 17. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's like Karazor may live uh, at least around one. Uh, <laughs> what about old Joey O, who also used the famous bit of luck? Had to use a bottle cap, got an adjusted 10 and a natural 20. Oh, oh. No. oh. excellent use of the bottle cap. Good, good cap job. use. Good cap good use. Cap. Good cap. Yeah, that was great <laughs> cap use. <laughs> Jolly good cap. <laughs> Let's talk about our friends who failed yeah. uh, in this role. Something about this thing, right as it is birthed into the world out of the remains of Mayor Kriegler, Kriegler it just causes this uh, feeling of uh, lethargy and torpor that just overwhelms you immediately right when you see it, sapping both your energy and speed. You're both affected... Uh, as per the spell, slow. <gasps> We've all heard of haste. Everybody likes haste. Yeah. Well, let's get slow. Uh, creatures affected by this spell are staggered and can only oh. take a single move action or standard action each turn, but not both, nor may it take full round actions. Additionally, let's just throw it on there. It takes a minus one to attack, AC, and reflex saves. What else, Charlie? A slowed creature moves at half its normal speed, rounded down, which affects your jumping distance, if you feel like jumping at this moment. Not great. Not great. Mm. That is but not just the, the end of the world, either. Not the end of the world. Yeah. It's just the aura that this thing uh, gives out. Let's go to the map here, and let's, let's, introduce, let's introduce this guy to the party. Because I have oh, his pawn. I'm scared to look at it. I was t- to when I it. thought about revealing the map, I was like, oh shit, no, that guy's hidden over there. So uh, um, you remember the, the shift Z, the command Z reveal? Ooh. No. So if you just put it on the map and then hit, I think it's hit command Z, it makes it the size of the screen, the, the, the icon for us oh. to see. Wait, really? It should. No, it just, it just no that just it. made him. Yeah, he's gone now. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Hey. <laughs> All right. Nice tr- oh, wait. Oh, sorry. It's Shift Z on a PC. I don't know what it is on a Mac. Could be Shift Z or. Uh, well, let's see. Shift. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Look at that. Oh. oh there he is. Yeah. Command Z cool. will definitely undo things. Yeah. It'll. That fun? Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. That last wow, him. going to suck some blood. Yep. This uh, Kriegler is just a pile of gore. He pops out. Everyone uh, is affected by that, but only. Uh, you know. 
Raven and Crystal Ghost fall prey. His proboscis is quite phallic, so I think uh, our proboscis. friend will have proboscis. It will have uh, will have plenty of genitals to chew on after we kill it. That'll count. <laughs> I, I'm going to call it now. That counts. <laughs> uh, it will act. Wait, Crystal Ghost just went right. Yeah. yeah. Though I you, technically, oh no, I, I was. And then it should uh, be all, all I picked was a standard move, standard up. action. But uh, I guess now Let I'm slow. Let me see. It has uh, a higher initiative than Alfonso, but lower than the Crystal Ghost. It doesn't have the mayor's initiative. It rolled a new initiative. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so yeah, it's going to go now. But who is it going to hurt? Raven? Uh, the Crystal Ghost? Alfonso? Sounds like we need a D6. One, two, Braven. Three, four, Crystal. Five, six, Alfonso. Crystal. Oh. oh. No. Okay. Oh. How's your how's your constitution, Crystal Ghost? Fine. Why do you ask? Let's see if it's still <laughs> fine at the end of the round. Oh, no. so it's, oh just, it's like it surges. Oh, yeah. It's long proboscis has a little Super stinger powered. at the end of it, and it just boom tries and hits you with it. Come on, Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Twenty-two to hit. That'll do. Oh, dear. Awesome. All right, boom sauce. Uh, 14 points of damage. Oh. It attaches itself to you. So now you take 1d2 con damage. Oh, God. Which in this case will be two points of con damage. Oh. <laughs> Just a reminder for those of you listening at home uh, if you get to zero of con damage, you permanently die. Uh, and then I need you to roll a fortitude save against oh, no. the poison coursing through its weird mouth. Uh, 10. Oh, no. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Oh, ghost, no. Ghost, right. no. You take one point of wisdom damage, oh, and you God. are confused for one round. Get your D100 ready. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. And all of you get your good. defenses up, because if the crystal ghost accidentally hits and crits you, you might be in rough shape. I think that's uh, the... The 50 to 76 range or something as uh, attack your, the nearest person. Anyways, uh, get confusion up. In the meantime, it is now Alfonso's turn. This thing is going to stay right there. Oh, it's, it's attached it. to the Crystal Ghost, but it's not. Uh, can I do, the Crystal Ghost doesn't take a grappled penalty. Can I do a knowledge check? Yeah. Uh, wait, I got, my, uh, I got my John ready here with my, uh, to tell you what kind of knowledge it is. Ready? Dungeoneering. It's the fastest Shh. I've ever done that. <laughs> it's not a great one for old Alphonse. We have the champagne room! 15. 15. Total? 15. Or was that the modifier? Inspiration. 15 total. Uh, yeah. I can give you one, one piece of relevant information. Uh, is there something specific you want to know? Or you want me to just wild card you? Wild card me. Okay. Uh, it does blood drain when it attaches to a victim. Oh, no oh, kidding. Oh, uh, no, I can tell you this. It. Uh... All right, this is kind of important. That aura that affected Braven and Crystal Ghost, it's a stagnation aura. Um, it goes away when you step outside of 20 feet, but it's. It doesn't immediately go away. If you step outside of that 20-foot aura, it still lasts for another 1d3 rounds after that. And then it comes again right when you enter the aura, unless you save, in which case, like you, uh, Joe, and Skid's character, uh, Kari Zoran Alfonso, you're immune for 24 hours now. But they, even if they get outside the aura, uh, it's going to slow them. In addition to that, uh, this this is really cool. This is why I gave you this information. This aura fouls liquids of all types within the area. So a creature that drinks anything in a blight spawn, spawns uh, aura, including potions and alchemical elixirs, must make a DC 14 fortitude save or be nauseated for 1d3 rounds. Oh, wow. Wait, wait, so its aura it? stagnates your liquid. Uh I think it's all liquids regardless. Get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is gross, in, that complete. I was just about to drink a potion. So, like, it doesn't matter. Good knowledge roll. Good knowledge roll. That's a huge knowledge roll. Huge. I'll you give myself a 100% certain <laughs> it doesn't matter that I say it. In 100%. addition, this aura fouls liquids of all types within the area. Oh, God. Yeah, I think it's a. So it's a separate save if you do drink any, any liquid that's been befouled. It's a fortitude right. save? Yeah. You want to drink a potion to cure mod? You might get sick from it. And it's oh, every no. subsequent this save, too. It busted me. It busted me. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Wow. It's an anti Alfonso aura. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Uh, he'll, he'll say that, he'll yell that in the heat of battle. If you get away from it, you will not be so staggered by its uh, presence. Can you uh, imagine being feet? down to like two hit points? You need to take that push. And you take it, you heal yourself up, but then you're just bleh, retching for three rounds while it kills you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just completely, yeah, it just like nullified his entire class. Uh, all right, I, I'll stab at him this round. But he'll kill me. It, it, seriously, what he if he does to me what he did to the Crystal Ghost, I'll be dead. I mean, I'm around. between the con damage and the damage damage. I'm significant. I'm below half my hit points to say. Okay, the least. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, probably gonna die. <laughs> oh, that's so right. I gotta get out of there. He's gonna stab. First, he's gonna stab. Let's get a crit. Then we can go from there. Yeah. Natural one. <gasps> no! <laughs> no! Oh my god! If this combo is like it doesn't let you move or you go prone, I'm gonna die. Right now, your fumble is like you immediately drink all your elixirs. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> oh, why am oh, I doing this? No. <laughs> why am I doing this? <laughs> oh my God! You've oh, got to no. be kidding me! Oh, this is no. amazing. I love Find the, another one from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I love the. <laughs> oh my God! I literally just did because it's the same guy. So oh, I like, no. literally went on it, and it's the same <laughs> fucking guy. He's, it's his fumble? Yeah. Oh, wow. my God. Let's oh, just that's do amazing. It. Rob yeah, from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. You got a boat tonight, buddy. Oh, hey, come on. Does he have a funny pun on your name? No, but it's funny. Idiotech Neek. Nice. In the heat of battle, the fundamentals of combat technique elude you, and you slip into a pool of ichor. Perhaps this is oozing off of the mosquito. You are panicked for 1d2 rounds. Oh, no. That means you drop your weapon and just run. <laughs> right into if the corn. If only you were slowed, you wouldn't be able to get very far. Will save negates. All right. And the will save is the AC of the creature? Yes. Will save is the AC of the creature. I have a terrible will save. Six. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. That's it. A panicked right. creature, by the way, must drop anything it holds and yeah. flee at top speed from the source of its fear, as well as any other dangers it encounters yeah, along a random Bonto. path. He it sees what it did to the crystal ghost. Any other actions? Minus two to saving throws, skill checks, and ability checks. Uh, holy shit! And you didn't move, so you can still on your action. Yeah. Move at top so speed. So he sees what happened to Crystal Ghost. He's just like, it, it will kill me. It will kill me. Well, roll the one d two rounds. Okay. And uh, and I am Guar going to guaranteed two rounds. Let's see, one round, one round. Well, here's yeah. a question: If it's one round, is it just this round? Yep. Okay. Next yeah, is affecting so, you this round because I'm affected. Yeah, I'm affected by it. All right. So he drops his weapon and provokes all attacks of opportunities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all attacks of opportunities. One, two, three, four, five, six, and runs away from the combat. The um. Okay, where are you? You're up there, right? Yeah, I moved away from the mosquito and one of the cultists, the one that was near. Can I get away? Well, whatever. I wouldn't be smart enough. I just run right past cars or yeah. I past cars or I just keep running. Basically, um, the minute this thing came out of uh, Kriegler's remains, uh, all of the cultists in the immediate area, uh, including the ones that stepped up to try to defend Krieger, uh, fell to the ground in a fit of like religious ecstasy. And they're just speaking in tongues and writhing about the ground. So you don't provoke from any of them. And it's attached to uh, Crystal Ghost, and it sees you run away, and it's just like... In its mind, it knows it's doing the right thing. It doesn't try to attack you. 
You're so welcome, your, Alfonso. Your weapon's on the ground, and I'm assuming the Icker uh, dissolves your weapon as well. So moving on uh, to the also, next. I think you can you not move since you can't go anywhere in a straight line in that distance. I don't know. I mean, I think if you're running, like you can't turn. So if you like you, that would be four times your speed. I think but, you just have to move as fast as you can. You, I don't think it uses the the, run the keyword run. Yeah, Flee at but top you, speed. Flee yeah. at top speed. Which you, top but, speed but you I don't think able. you can run, so you just have to use your max like single move action because you already yeah. took a standard, right? Yeah. 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 So you would it would only be twenty feet or thirty feet or whatever. Yeah, I move thirty feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's with it. 20, 25, 30, Yeah. Thirty feet. Okay. Actually, Great. probably more like this. I don't have that second diagonal. So you're 30 feet away and weaponless while this horrifying creature hovers over the arena. Crystal Ghost, how much con are you sitting at with the damage? Relative con, let's say. Uh, I mean, I have a 14 con and I took two con damage. Oh, and you had cured all the con from before. Yeah. So right now it's more of a hit point issue for you. Yeah, it's a serious hit point issue. So don't don't you worry, Troy. Things are still very bad. Good, good. I was just, just making sure. Just checking in, mainly for the listeners. Uh, okay, it is now... Karazor's turn. Okay. Uh, Karazor is going to jump up onto this pyre and jump down on the other side. <laughs> okay. Just like uh, skirting away from the uh, fire. From the fire. And say, uh, so no, you're not well versed in tax law, but we're about to see if your scrotum is deductible. <laughs> <laughs> and he does an overhand <laughs> chop. With his great sword. <laughs> Overhand chop. Uh, that is a 22 to hit. That is a hit. Okay. Uh, that is 21 points of damage. Oh. Okay. What yeah. kind of weapon do you have? Uh, it is a plus one now. Um, great sword. Uh, that's right. So it is magic for the purposes of uh, getting past uh, spell resistance or spell reduction, yes. damage yes. reduction, third time yes. to charm. Uh, yeah, so you see that all go through. Boom! Overhand chop uh, from Karazor. Huge, where two of your friends are slowed and the other one has ran away like a coward. Um, speaking of cowards, rhymes with Craven. It's Braven's turn. Oh, you figured me out. If it wasn't for those rascally kids, I would have gotten away with it, too. Um, I'm supposing that uh, I can't take a five-foot step. Sneak that into the old slowed condition. Can I? Uh, In addition to an action is what I mean. Uh, you're, well, when you're staggered, you can still take uh, a free like action. A free action and immediate action. Okay. I'm pretty sure when you're staggered. You then I will that. five foot step behind the crystal ghost immediately next to the fire. And as the fire kind of warms, now you can take free, swift, and immediate. So is a five foot a free action? Uh, Does that fall under free action? Yes. Oh. Okay. Okay. Then you're good. Great. So Braven's going to take a five foot step behind the crystal ghost and is then going to reach out and do a healing touch. This should be a total of six points of non-lethal damage you have now. I believe this is the second time I healed you. Correct, Crystal Ghost? Uh, yes, but then I drank a potion, so that, that non-lethal went That away non-lethal I... doesn't go away until you rest. Okay. So you have six now, but you're going to recover almost maximum. Uh, you are going to wow. recover a total of 20 points of hit points. Wow. Nice. Six and a five on the old 2d6. Uh, but now I have six non-lethal. Okay, great. I Crystal want Ghost is like <sighs> and reinvigorated, even though she has a giant uh, mosquito attached to her uh, <laughs> face. Um, face, probably. A very selfless <laughs> move <laughs> there. <laughs> big, <laughs> big move from Braven um, to keep uh, Crystal Ghost alive. And it is the Crystal Ghost turn. You are also slowed. Uh, you know the deal. So... Uh, Remind me because it's attached to me. I, I I know I don't have the grapple condition, but it, to free myself, that would be. I'm glad you asked. Uh, What's well, a CMB check or a? It's just, I believe it's artist. escape artist or strength. Um, let me CMB. just. CMB. CMB against CMB. Okay. Um, well, I'm uh, I'm yeah. I'm not going to worry about that actually. Grapple or escape artist? Excuse me. Yeah. Because I'm slowed, uh, probably best if I can just try to do some damage here. 
So What's the worst I'm, thing could happen? Uh, death, probably. Um, <laughs> yeah, permanent, permanent character death. Is. Permanent character death. Oh wait, no, I'm confused. I'm confused. I have to oh, roll on the table. Right. Oh, that's right. Oh, let's yeah. roll on the table. Bottle cap. Yeah, photo cap for remembering you're confused. All right, let's uh, <laughs> let's pull up the. Confused, I guess I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> the confused table, and I'll roll my d100. Don't hit Braven, dude. Twenty-five. Act normally. Oh, uh, amazing. Nice. Oops, salad. And amazing. I'm no longer I'm no longer confused after this round, yes. right? Yeah, that's right. All Correct. right. Next next round, you'll be crystal clear. All right, I'm taking a two-handed swing with the long sword. Power attack, power attack. Power attack. Uh, 14 to hit. Oh. Big ol' miss. Oh, not great. You shouldn't have missed that one, man. Thanks, That's one you don't. (laughs) Yeah, why'd you of all the ones to miss? I don't know why you right. picked that one. <laughs> how's your how's your uh, how's your panicked state suiting you over there, uh, Alfonso? <laughs> I'm feeling better. I think I'm gonna come back. What happened to your accent? Uh, <laughs> I just got scared right out of me. It's too I'm scared. panicked. <laughs> uh, that is my turn because I am slow. Beautiful. Um, let's just see here. I'm. Uh, it's my turn. So I'm trying to decide. What I mean, I've got like a cornucopia of awful things to do here, so it's really just trying to pick which one. I think yeah. I'm going to do something just real, real cruel. Yeah. Um, but it gives one of you a chance to roll to save. Uh, but I just want to make sure. What I'm trying to figure out is if do I have to maintain the attach to drain more con from you? Oh, that's on you. That's on the creature. Like I don't, I don't know if you have to for that ability. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to. When it, when it hits, it's attached. Um, and I'm losing. Uh, main, Here's the uh, thing. Uh, oh no! I have to maintain the grapple, uh, yes. and I get a bonus to maintain the grapple. But I wonder if that. Just asking for a friend. Is did maintaining the grapple a standard? I, I can never remember that. Well, well yeah, I, I think that it's as part of like if there's an ability that says you maintain the grapple. I'm pretty sure you're not using an action to maintain. You're. It's part of the, that action. Yeah, I mean, this is sure. this economy of action right now is so important because I don't want to make this any worse than it needs to be. You know what I mean? I want it to be just the right amount of awful. Uh, Asking for f- a friend, did you apply the grappled condition when you checked your AC against my <sighs> stab? You're not. You only roll a 14, but yeah. That uh, no, that's fine. I lose my dex bonus to AC, right? Uh, yes. You... I yes, I think. And you minus yeah, it's a minus four penalty to to dexterity. So, oh, yeah, so it's more than that. So it's it's a, it's basically a minus two to AC. It's a minus two to AC. So it's a minus yeah. four penalty to dex, not Which lose your dex in a bonus. minus two to AC. Two. So yeah, no hit. Okay. Just Good, checking. Uh, no, see, this is how this is how it should be done. Hey, did you dip, up, 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 skip, up. That's how we can all learn together. Um, <laughs> all right, so do your awful thing. Well, I'm just trying to see if maintaining the grapple is. Uh, <laughs> you ever look up something and you're like, oh, yeah, it says right here. And you're like, oh, wait, no, that's Magic the Gathering rules. I don't need to know the rules for <laughs> yeah, maintaining a grapple. For, uh, what is it called, the ability? Attach. I believe it's in the Universal Monster Rules we that's learned, what I'm right? I'm looking at right now. Yeah, I'm looking at I have it right here, and it doesn't. Uh, Maybe I'm not reading it uh, correctly. I Maybe just we should look at the galactic monster rules instead. <laughs> oh, Grant, you son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so attacker's turn. You can maintain the grapple. Oh no, you can maintain the grapple and perform some other action as a standard action. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so maintaining the grapple. I think I'm reading here. All right, well, uh, while, you can while, do while that. we're stopped. Is it actually attached and math and the crystal ghost is not grappled? Yes. Then wouldn't did, is that what you did? No, but Matthew? but it, you, basically you she's not sixteen to hit. She doesn't have the grappled condition, but if she wants to break free, she has to do a grapple or escape artist check. Okay, so you but, didn't take a penalty to your hit, two hit. That's all I'm asking. No, Troy said Troy no. set it up not to do that when he oh, when okay, he first great, got great. him. Yes. Um, what I was going to say though is Matthew still takes a penalty to hit because of slowed as well. So, anyways, yes. Now that we got that out of the way. Let's uh, maintain. Try to maintain the grapple, drain you of con, and then do something horrible to one of you. Great. Unless you pass your save. Sounds like sounds like a plan. 
Sounds like a real good play. I'm going to go with this white uh, cat's eye from our good buddies at Norse Foundry. Uh, Where is my fucking John? Oh, there it is. <laughs> That's a pretty high plus to maintain a crap zone. Pretty sure it's a plus five. Oh, fuck. It's- 31 against your CMD? Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that exceeds my CMD. <laughs> All right. 1D2 con damage. Two points oh, of con damage. On, he's, she's he's I mean, right, now. Th- the plus side is you don't need con when you're dead. No. You can't take it with you, Matthew. I was going to say, they always say you can't take it with you. Con. Can't take that high con with you. <laughs> okay, this is this is real bad bad news right here. Um, but who? But who? Why Let's is roll it someone con- else? Let's roll a concentration check. <laughs> I'm just Ooh-hoo. saying, you aren't all wrapped up with uh, your target there? Rocks, and I rolled the green one. Rocks, pass the concentration check. Uh, I'll tell you right now. We got to we got to decide who it's going to be between the four of you. Uh, we got Karazor. Well, Alfonso, you're out of range. I'm going to take you out, Alfonso. You got your own stuff. Alfonso, Crystal Ghost. No, excuse me. Crystal Ghost, Karazor, or Braven. <sighs> one, two, Crystal Ghost. Three, four. Excuse me. One, two, Karazor. Three, four, Crystal Ghost. Five, six, Braven. <sighs> Crystal, if it's, if it's you, Crystal, it's bad. Three, Crystal Ghost. I thought it was one, two. No, you, Karazor is one, two. He changed it because he wanted you to die. I went up <laughs> top to bottom. I think you're so smart using the dice to escape your guilt, don't you? <laughs> I need you to roll a very, very important, very, very important will save. Oh. I believe slowed gives you a minus one to your will save. Just make sure. I have uh, a no, excuse me, minus then. one to your reflex save. So your will save stays the same. All right. You're going to want to pass. Natty it. 16 for All right. 20. Yes. 20. Thank God. All right. All right. Nothing okay. bad happens. I mean, that would have been game for the Crystal Ghost. Um, Crystal, but you're all right. You're all right. I mean, I'm not. I'm not great. I'm not. You're not fine. Great. You're fine. Now you pass that. You're good. <laughs> I was going to bestow curse upon you. Oh God. And take oh. a give you a give you a minus six to your con. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh my God! Let me just see what would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> your your so iPad that, starts smoking. <laughs> so that would have been ten con damage. Take him, all right. Uh, I would have still been alive, but I would have had a, a max of fifteen hit points. Oh my God! Wow. Is, I believe half my hit points. Wow! Uh, <laughs> huge save! Huge save! I feel like no one's passed a will save Wait, since episode one of Side Quest. That's your save. HP at ten con damage. I'm at four con damage. My HP is 18. My max? My current HP is 24. Okay. Good good turn for it. Um, let's move on now. I've taken up, taken up enough space here. It is now you, off. Does my poison have any... Uh, do I have to worry about that right now? When did you get poisoned by it? Yeah. Yeah, roll... Thank you for reminding me. Roll another uh, fortitude save. It's every round. Well, this has gone down significantly. I have to mm-hmm. just... Fortitude? Yeah. yeah, so 14. Okay, that's another fail. Two saves to cure it, by the way. So uh, that'll be one point of wisdom damage. Oh, it's just going to slowly sap your wisdom until you're a vegetable. Uh, it is now Alfonso's turn. And Alfonso, um, if you're just tuning in, uh, dropped his weapon uh, last round and ran away. And ran away. What do, Alfonso? Uh, all right, uh, I am going to assume well, I could do the maths here, right? Oh yeah, I'm well. I'm out of the well out of the range of this thing. I'm out of the range of its aura. Um, <laughs> so, oh, God, this is such a pain in the ass. I'm going to draw another rapier. I'm going to draw my silver rapier, and I'm going to draw uh, an oil of magic weapon. And that's oh, there you go. That's my round. Okay. So he's in the bushes, like, what have I done? I must get back in there, but not no, without being properly armed. So he Straight draws on a good oil? Silver rapier and draws out an oil. That's going to okay. be his turn. Okay, good turn. Good turn. Uh, as your other weapon slowly dissolves in the black ichor from the creature. Uh, it is Karazor's turn. Karazor uh, came down with a hard overhand chop, uh, and since he threw that uh, fucking 
oil of magic weapon on there, he was able to bypass the DR. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to try to do it again. Uh, Smart. Same exact do thing, it. power attack. Uh, that's a uh, 18 to hit. That's a hit. Yes. Yeah, all right. There we go. We need that massive oh. Karazor damage. Uh, that's 19 points of damage. There it is. Jeepers. Boom! Hit it. It's just wings look like they're starting to work. Uh, and he bah, hits it pretty hard. Uh, okay, good, good. Another great round from Karazor. You know, everyone picks their moments to be uh, be the MVP, and this is a great time to have your fucking uh, fighter come through. Yeah, yeah. It's Braven's turn. Braven, you are slowed. Uh, you used last turn to heal the Crystal Ghost. Thank goodness, goodness you did. What do you want to do this time? Uh, yeah, and I, I feel somewhat uh, dubious about doing that uh, because 24 max hit points and 6 non-lethal damage on top of that not a good sitch for my old pal who is in no way a professor of anthropology um braven is going to kind of do this on a wing and a prayer uh with shooting into melee uh it's already only a plus one in my slowed state to hit so i am going to go ahead and turn on deadly aim and hope that i roll really high okay <sighs> here it comes cool. for a it does have the it has the grapple condition. That's right. Okay, for a cumulative point plus zero. 19! Oh! 19! Oh, 19, 19 on the die! 19 on the die! <laughs> oh my god. That is a, uh, that's a hit. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so incredible. So instead of plus nine, this is plus 11 now. It's low level uh, point, or uh, deadly aim. So here we go. Uh, 20 points of damage. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, it looked like its wings were just starting to be uh, active, like they could be used, and now they're soaked, and it comes back down to the ground a little bit. Uh, you really fuck it up. I mean, it looks like it might be done soon. It's like the, I told the story about when I sprayed bees with Pam on stream. It, it's just like when I was a kid. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Hear that story again? Um, <laughs> I don't remember that story. Oh yeah, it was terrible. I, I learned. Remember. I learned. Yeah, Matthew remembers. Tom remembers. It's very. Uh, it's very fortunate. I'm not a psychopathic serial killer. Absolutely devastating hit on this thing. Devastating uh, to come right after Karazor's big overhand chop. It's a Crystal Ghost turn. Uh, crystal, you're slowed. Talk to me. Okay, I'm just gonna stab. Two handed power attack with come up with this thing. It's the only thing I can do. Natural 20. Yes! Oh my yes! God! Yes! We are superheroes! Yes! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Confirm. Oh. Confirm. Oh. Not a ghost! He's screaming. For uh, uh, Natty 15. So 20 to confirm. It's a confirmed crit. Oh, yes! yes! Oh. So phenomenal, Matthew. So phenomenal. Oh. Do the Matthew happy dance. Do the Matthew happy dance. Happy dance. dance. Unbelievable. <laughs> Does Cherry Hill, New Jersey have another? Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Oh, I just lost it. All uh, right. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, this is Shu from Chicago, Illinois. Hi, Shu. Hi, Shu. Uh, smash and grab. You strike the target with such force that their grip on their weapon loosens. How about their grip on me? Double oh. damage and make a free CMB check against their CMD to grab their weapon and toss it 10 feet. Targets <laughs> with natural weapons take triple damage instead. You did it, Shu. You did it. Oh my God, Shu. Now Matthew oh. has become death destroyer of worlds. 37 <laughs> points of damage. <laughs> Dead. No! Oh, yeah. It's gonna give it to you! <laughs> yeah. It's gonna give it to you! I, w oh I wish I had God. taken the option to roll a CMB to grab it by its proboscis and just throw it. <laughs> <laughs> Swing it around like fucking Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> Into the cornfields. Oh I mean, that's uh, oh. that's uh, two crits and a fumble, right? So that's $150, yeah, 150 to direct relief. Yeah. Uh, we forgot to, to say relief. on Joe's fumble, unbelievable, and what a way 
to take it down. Oh, I mean, God, amazing. You know, you know, like take away those crits and like this thing is, uh, it's got really good juice, but I mean, crush, crush, crush. Oh. Great job. Wow. <laughs> and uh, with the death of this thing, I'll tell you right now, it's called a blight spawn. <gasps> oh, what a cool Ooh. name. The, the cultists that were all laying on the ground just writhing in ecstasy, still covered in all those bugs and speaking in tongues. <laughs> Imagine that was your symphony while you were fighting this thing for oh. all of uh, 18 seconds. This <laughs> uh, As this thing <laughs> hits the ground and uh, starts just leaking the same ichor out oh. that uh, Alfonso drew just seeping into the ground and you see the ground start to pulsate as its uh, insides mix with the dirt. All of the cultists one by one like come to and and stand up and and as they do the blanket of mosquitoes and other gnats and bugs clinging to their bodies just start to drop away to the ground and they're all just standing there naked kind of lost as the uh, rosy fingers of dawn begin to claw their way through the sky <laughs> and it awesome. takes a moment or so after that for them to like come to and even be aware of what's happening and they see just Kriegler chunks of Kriegler everywhere, and this blight spawn just festering on the ground already. It stinks. And then they notice their nakedness, and they start like scrambling to to grab robes, any bits of clothing they can, and they're not even putting it on so much as just like uh, co covering themselves and covering their 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 uh, aforementioned genitals and they just look at the four of you in a mixture of uh, of like shock and fear and just stand there some of them are like backing away and then like looking for an exit out of the maze stay back you crazy bastards as they're like backing into the hedges he's like <laughs> come with me they just start like dispersing in all different directions never like leaving eyes with you and like it's this weird look on their face of like <sighs> it's fear but it's also like shame shame I think Braven takes that in and looks over at Karazor and says I don't even see why crew McEnroe bothered to spy on all the townspeople while they were bathing pretty ugly scene out there <laughs> you see skender cardsy oh god i've been looking for this son of a bitch standing there covered in liver spots and scars and he's just holding one of those mosquito masks over his johnson <laughs> he's like that's how long it is <laughs> And he backs away. <laughs> <laughs> Disappears. Leaving the proboscis the style. Out. And then like Homer Simpson style just pulls it yes. back into the <laughs> uh, And suddenly you're all left in the middle of this maze. Covered in the entrails of the mare. And the young girl is like still uh, kind of struggling to get through. And eventually she, she kind of breaks through and just looks at you and she's trembling. It's all right. They're free. No one will hurt you now. Though, if you're planning on going home, I'd suggest maybe thinking twice about dressing your parents since they did give you up for ritual sacrifice. Where, where will I go? May I suggest Magnamar? Where, where is that? Oh. 
And the crystal ghost points in the direction of Magnamar. Was it south southwest of here? South south uh, southwest. So it's just like that way. Just walk till you hit the water. <laughs> It'll be a while. Yes, just walk, by all means. walk just alone. Walk that way. <laughs> Two hundred miles. Yeah. <laughs> eventually, you might want to take somebody with you, but eventually, you'll hit a city. She reaches down and grabs one of the sickles and just walks in the direction you point. <gasps> you might you might also want to grab some shoes. Ah, uh, yes. It is, it is rather a long way. All right. Godspeed. Uh, I'm you still can't. poisoned, right? Yeah, you're still poisoned. Uh, does anyone have a, a means of s- neutralizing the poison? I believe you guys found some. Yeah. We have antitoxin. Uh, anti- oh, yeah. The potions of neutralized poison. So uh, does that give you a second save or does it automatically stop a poison? Um, I don't remember. I think it just gives I you another don't save. Know. It's like the. Uh, it's, it, the reason is we have to play this out because it takes two saves to cure it. So I don't know if it's like an auto save. Plus five alchemical you- bonus on fortitude saving throws against poison for one hour. All right, okay. great. All right, so okay. you drink one, and let's play this out and see if you're gonna, if you were able to get. That's why that advice was so shitty to that girl. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, plus five. So a fifteen on the fortitude save. I think it was sixteen. Let me see. <gasps> DC sixteen. Oh so, my god! Mind you, wait. Plus plus five. Oh. Oh come on, Matthew. No, no, it's still a fifteen. Oh. Okay, two points of wisdom damage. Oh my god. Uh, all right. Try it again. Oh my god! Imagine. Okay. Uh, sixteen. Just made it, but now you have to get this one again. Uh, two consecutive saves, or you start over. Uh, seventeen this time. All right. <sighs> uh, I started to bring up ability scores here just to see what it says for a wisdom of zero. Uh, what is your wisdom now after losing all that? Well, it, this is this is this what we always say. Like it doesn't work like that. I have. I mean, I have a sure. You're rel- when I say that, I'm like, what is your relative wisdom? Uh, minus two. I have a minus two bonus to all wisdom based checks. I have a character with a wisdom score of zero is incapable of rational thought as and is unconscious. <laughs> the crystal ghost is like. Does anyone want to take my class on anthropology? <gasps> Gasp. What? <laughs> rubble, 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 rubble. I have rubble. to find my 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 notes, but it, I promise it's a good it's a good lecture. Apology <laughs> with like a mask on. <laughs> it's like a, with like a little string of staples in the side of it. <laughs> uh, I have really great things to say about what we've witnessed here. Because wait a minute. <laughs> you guys came here because Jaminda Anarchy asked you to look uh, and see what happened. She sent her cousin Elias Kyle, or not her, is it her cousin or her brother in law? Brother in law, yeah. Elias Kyle. Um, of her dead sister. Hard times, if a hard times after uh, his wife, her sister passed away. Uh, But he had turned his life around, got a job as a tax collector in Magnamar. She sent him here to try and uh, collect the 500 gold pieces uh, that was missing because of an accounting error. Raven Moore just wasn't on Magnamar's radar, and she didn't want to get in trouble for it, so she wanted to just... She wanted to get anybody in trouble, sent him. He never came back. She asks you, outside of Magnamar, kind of on her own, can you go and See what happened to my cousin. Brother also, in-law. brother-in-law, and also like <laughs> get this five hundred gold pieces if you can. We, we, I really need this to like make the books right. Fix the books. Fix the books. You come here, and Ravenmoor is a weird place. It is a place outside of time in many ways, and you get a sense very early on that something ain't right. And now you see what was going on. It was this cult of Glondur infecting the place. While you've eliminated a threat, you still haven't completed your mission. 
You need that 500 gold pieces that he said he was going to give you. What do you do? Class, let's take a field trip and ransack the mayor's house. Uh, Say Class, shit. <laughs> Class. <laughs> For my friend, the crystal ghost. We're just Not me, of course. Down. The professor. Yes, in the back, Braven. Uh, <laughs> professor, I, I was just wondering if uh, the, the oh. exam would be open book or not. Can we keep our notes what at least? What are you talking about, Braven? We have no time to think about that now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go back to town to get out of this place. I'm really confused, but I agree. I think we should go back to town uh, with the professor's endorsement. Who's Crystal, the professor? professor Ghost. Professor Ghost? <laughs> professor Ghost. Professor Ghost. <laughs> that has a ring to it. That's better than the Crystal Ghost. I like ghost. it. Yes, I like it. Professor Ghost. Professor Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Professor Goldie ghost. Wilson. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So a go plus, back. A plus for you. Ah. Carismore. Oh, that'll bring my GPA up to a 1.6. <laughs> uh, I say we go back to town, ransack everything, put a put a lean on everything in the town, take everything that's valuable that we can carry, and then burn the rest of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> we, fi- we finally freed him from this evil cult. <laughs> now we'll just burn everything to the ground. Yes. Now they can suffer a more conventional, a Ooh. conventional horrible thing. We walk away <laughs> from the they town, will starve to death, and. Die of exposure, all the normal uh, things that can happen uh, to a poor, ignorant yeah, person exactly. out here in the wilderness. We'll, we'll, we'll dam the river, uh, make sure the there's river. no fresh water running through. We'll employ a team of beavers to dam the river. <laughs> we'll get all the salt you can imagine, we'll pour it into the earth so they can't grow anything. It's Burn so down their the houses. <laughs> Was uh, Kriegler, whatever is left of his body that got peeled off of the mosquito like a banana peel, uh, was he wearing clothes? Was there like a key on him to make our ransacking easier as we go back to his home? Uh, Good question. Um, The only thing you see left behind uh, is his spear, which appears magical. Ooh. Um, And let me see here. I love, I love, I love my magical spear. You also find, uh, yes, bottle cap, Grant. You do find find, uh, a a ring of keys as well. Um, In addition to a silver unholy symbol of, you would assume, Glondur, um, two doses of antitoxin. Uh, I can just tell you this right now because you would find out anyways. Two uh, potions of shield of faith plus two. Never got to use one of those in the fight. And uh, three potions of cure light wounds. Nice. Oh, great. Great. Any No potions of lesser restoration by any chance, right? No, no, no. That spear, by the way, I'll just tell you, it's a plus one spear. If that's oh, something nice. you're interested in. Um, but yes, you do find a set of keys. Bottle cap for burger. Nice bird dog. But you said a set? There are like multiple... Yeah, a ring, ring of keys. Yeah. A ring of keys. Huh. Maybe we'll... So we'll have to try everything inside of his house, but then we can try it. Well, there, there, was the lock, there was the one locked door in the back, right? I don't There's remember. A, Do you want to go back to the, the manor? Safeness. Yeah, we'll yes. go back to the manor. Let's go back to roll 20. Oh. Um, oh I'm, still, I'm still in my room. <laughs> guys, get out of your room. Uh, all right, so you guys uh, head back to the manor house as uh, the the sun is. It's not up yet, but it's probably like six in the morning at this point. After you like take stock of everything and all of this goes down, it's uh, a new day is starting, and uh, you slide the key in the door and open the door to reveal. The one uh, open room. Yes. Yeah, there's a chest or something in there. Chest. I see a a chest that's wooden. A shield or a sombrero in the upper right hand corner. (laughs) Uh, Could also be a table with something on it. Or a gigantic pith hat. 
you'd see a, <laughs> uh, a large bed, uh, a dresser, a wardrobe, and a wash basin. And that's it in terms of furniture for this room. Uh, there is a, a quilt on the bed that depicts um, what looks like a, a priestess' uh, sojourn through a swamp. And then you see her. It kind of is like telling the story that uh, the the young uh, women told at the feast. Like you see this priestess walking through a swamp and coming upon two druids and bringing the druids back to Ravenmore. Um, and it shows the three of them, the priestess and the two druids, teaching the villagers how to cultivate uh uh, some a serrated leaf plant, perhaps flay leaf, uh, and offering the fruits of their labor to a symbolic butterfly. So it's a very elaborate uh, quilt that you would assume has been passed down throughout the generations. Um, that's all you see. We ransack every room in the house. Starting yeah. with this one. Starting with uh, this one. All right. So starting with this room, you uh, you know you're taking twenty. You're really looking taking your time and looking through everything and uh we're kind of we're kind of aggressive about it we'll say yeah, yeah we're turning yeah. it off awesome. beds and uh we'll say braven uh, cutting chairs point, oh, yeah like ripping, looking for ripping heroin out. ripping stuff we're, out we're, we're talking <laughs> total heroin. total house flip we're gonna turn this on the market double our profit <laughs> uh braven you find a loose floorboard in uh like underneath one of the rugs that alfonso rips up and burns uh and you lift up the floorboard and you see a large red chest <sighs> Ooh, it's locked you go to that fucking key ring yes. Kunk, Booyah, right kasha. Up, and it looks like it holds the town's funds so you find uh looks like seven eight silver pieces eight silver pieces yeah you spent, <laughs> you spent all the rest on mosquito masks <laughs> <laughs> I want them to look good. <laughs> uh, no, you find 720 gold pieces. Um, you would imagine they've just been stockpiling money when they're not paying their taxes. Uh, also in the chest is what looks like, it's got to be a century old if it's a day, leather-bound journal that just, oh. bears, it just bears the inscription, uh, the Kriegler book oh on the title page. God. The Red Book of Kriegler. <laughs> you open it up because uh, you're the one that finds it brave and now everyone probably like you're like look what I got here and they all huddle around you to look and you see it's written in several different hands so like throughout the generations there's the always been a Kriegler have been writing in this book and uh, it looks like it chronicles uh, the family and it starts the first entry is written by Eola Kriegler herself and it ends with entries written by Andretti Kriegler. So you're like, this is going to, this, there's a lot of information in here, but it's something you're going to have to suss out over. I can <gasps> tell you it's mechanical over seven days. That's how much information is in here. Wow. Does it, wow. does, if I skim through real fast, do I see any mention of his brother? Uh, yeah, the I mean, there's so much pages. here. So much, yeah, much. Look at, look in the recent pages. Yeah. Okay. You can't, you can't find anything, but, but I can tell you on your journey back to Magnamar, you'll have plenty of time to, uh, pour over this and find out some information before uh, before handing the book over to the ghost professor um braven looks at the funds and says we found the 500 gold pieces and though we have to return it we have to at least do something good for this town something to give it the morale back it needs i suggest that we give the remaining 200 gold pieces to the town in order to create the perfect ceremony to give Vinegar Tom, the rest he deserves. There must be a parade. Two hundred gold pieces to these fools. We must oh, make we must make a mausoleum for Vinegar Tom. He died so that we could live. We built a great marble building for this fucking crow. <laughs> <laughs> you have been awake all night. You need some sleep. And you're right. A massive golden pyramid. <laughs> With canopic jars. We have to take all of his tiny bird guts out of them and put them inside. Raven, Raven. And you're, don't be ridiculous. This town works on a hay economy. You're right. <laughs> Damn it, you're right. We should so take there. the gold and leave them the hay. Yes, yes. So it's a great raven. 
will melt down the hay into ingots so they can transport it more easily <laughs> and relieve them of all their of all their horribly heavy gold. They've been researching hay alchemy to turn gold into hay for all these years. <laughs> <laughs> this was a great raven, a raven of vision and guts, and there's not even a plaque or a signpost or a statue of him in that town. <laughs> Someone put a bullet through his eye. <laughs> I never asked. I never asked. That had nothing to do with business. Business. <laughs> um. You keep looking, and there's one other thing of note. And by the way, this book is super dense. It's going to take uh, someone with probably high linguistics, like the professor, I'm assuming, to even like sort through this book. I don't know. Who's got the best linguistics among all of you? Probably. Mm, I don't have it. I don't I'm have just it a simple professor of anthropology. Oh. <laughs> I mean, um, I have a friend who's a professor of <laughs> anthropology. They could give it to her. She's coming oh. out of it. She might have a colleague <laughs> well rest assured hopefully a friend of a friend may know how to to sort through this book the only other piece of interesting evidence uh in the chest is a small leather pouch that contains uh three potions i'll tell you right now they cure light wounds so you get three more potions of cure light um and a silver signet ring Ooh. with a very familiar looking symbol on it uh law, knowledge local nobility uh yeah i got that let's I do got that as well. let's do local uh, oh man, I got a 14. 13 nobility, 14 local inspiration, uh, Joe. Uh, yeah, sorry, 19 nobility, 18. Ooh, Karazor beat you to the punch, but you're like, Oh, I also know what that is. <laughs> I also know it's like, uh, it is a typical Magnumarian government clerk's ring traditionally ah. used by tax collectors tax and uh. clerks to steal minor government missives. So, not unlike most serial killers. Uh, he had a little trophy, hmm. Elias Kyle, under his floorboards. What a grim thing to bring back. As you're searching through this house and tearing it apart, I imagine we just come out of there as the sun rises and a new day begins in Ravenmoor. We hear a chorus of cawing ravens ring out over the village as... Hundreds of these birds just descend upon the remnants of the feast at the festival grounds, and they're just gorging themselves on all the food that has been spilled over from the party onto the ground. You see birds like pecking at like calf uh, eyes, like trying to pull them out of the sockets and just fighting over little chunks of meat. Hundreds of birds in the festival grounds feasting upon the remains of the feast. They gorge themselves. Meanwhile, the rest of the village, not a soul stirs. We see the Lopescu home and shop. It's all closed up. No movement whatsoever for the Lopescu's have passed. We see the weaver's shop, small little hut. It's probably been around for a hundred years, maybe more. Silent, no one coming by for a new shirt or pair of pants. All of the stores remain closed. Even the ferry stands unguarded on this side of the Lamp Black River. As you exit the mayor's house, you're like, it takes you a second for your eyes to adjust to the sunlight because when you walked in, the sun hadn't fully risen yet. But it's out and you see just quiet silence throughout the village but there may be four villagers standing where you were standing when you first uh, approached just on the other side of the fence and they're like whispering to each other as you walk out onto the porch and pointing at you one of them steps forward as you guys are stepping down the steps it's like uh Word has started to spread about what you did and what was going on here. I don't know what you think you know, but you're not everybody here in, in Ravenmore was involved in those rituals and, and whatnot. I didn't know about that. They didn't know about that. I always had the sense something wasn't right, but 
wasn't all of us. Yet we're all affected by what you done just the same. You, you probably think that you're heroes, don't you? You go back to your big city and you, they give you your rewards and whatnot for what you've done. But what, what do we get? Young girls been murdered. Her whole life taken from her in an instant. Another girl is fucking walking to Magna Ma with a sickle in her hand. <laughs> At least that's what we a heard. tissue box on her feet. <laughs> she got tissue boxes on her feet walking around with a rusty sickle. <laughs> Fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, they're, they're dead. They're your hands, and I know you think you were doing good, but they're gone now. Mayor Krieglow was not a perfect man, but he always had the, the town's best interests at heart. We thrived because of that man, and even if half of the rumors are true, what he did in his own time was his own business. And now we have no one to lead us. So you, 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 may, you may leave here and you go back to your, your fancy houses and whatnot and you think you've done Raven Moore service, but you left us broken. Broken. So I think you should, you should just take what you came for and be on your way. Sometimes. Listen up. Uh, sorry, gentlemen, this is all very interesting, but if you wouldn't mind just standing aside so that we can proceed to impoverishing you and erasing your town from all history. <laughs> Please. <laughs> we had very specific plans for the day. It's, it's very early, but we have to start now. Well, at least we agree <laughs> that you'll be uh, leaving. I believe that you do not understand the difficulties of life. You think that your comfort, the things that are, that make your life something you can wake up to every day and be confident it will always be the same. Those same comforts do not exist for everyone. In fact, they exist for almost no one. The only thing that is constant in life is change. And unwanted change at that. Do not blame your problems on us. You must understand that whatever comfort it is you had, you did not earn it. It does not belong to you. And now you have lost it. So it is up to you to get out and find a new way to live. Not to blame your problems on someone else. And you can tell he's sort of like talking about his own shit. I am a professor of anthropology. And I have seen many cultures. <laughs> May I recommend when you're building your new new town not to ritually sacrifice the young women of the town, if you please, and then lecture those who come to just collect taxes. <laughs> That's at the end of the day. I'm so sick of saying this over and over. If you just paid your fucking taxes. Pay no, your taxes. Pay your taxes. Pay your taxes. At the yes, he says, at the end of the day, we're all people. I mean, we are. You're not. And you're too <laughs> lowly to be considered people. We people. are, and we know better than you do. That's what we're trying to say. <laughs> I think it's best if you go. You know, all right. <laughs> Don't twist my arm. Yeah. <laughs> we we made this basket for you. So you'll remember oh. us by. Oh, oh wow, nice. It's filled with dried, dead sturges. <laughs> it's, it's just sturges little, full of hay. A little flay leaf for the road. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cash basket. Could I get a road soda, as you say? <laughs> flay leaf. Would you like four, four roadies? <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to take your ferry. And when it goes to the other side, we're going to send it down river. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> that's that's un that's unnecessary. It's un that's just unkind. Yes, Alfonso, don't be don't be cruel. 
So we can just burn the fairy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right in front of them. Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm ready to go. I don't care. Yeah. All let's right. go. So you, yeah. you eventually, after mocking them incessantly, after destroying their entire uh, we don't have we don't have the tools to deal with Stockholm syndrome. Okay, <laughs> right. yeah. we 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 have biopsied a cancer and extracted it from the body of this town, and they're lucky we don't see them as a tumor as well. I, I'm within my rights right now with them being this resistant to just slash their throats, and whoever exactly. can't change will 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 also join them at the bottom of a pit, which is exactly. the same fate they gave to Elias Kyle. I your taxes. A D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no. with that, you guys, yeah, you you, you leave. You, oh, you look, here's the thing. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you one thing that I'm thinking. It's like, I am not opposed to going to Magnamar and like telling them what happened here and being like, it's up to you guys, but I strongly suggest you send some like lawmakers up there to like get that shit in order and give those people some structure. But like, I'm not doing it. You yeah. know, like I'm not no. going to rebuild not, the town. That's not your job, right? That's not my job. What are we, <laughs> they carpet have, beggars? We they don't know that. Training to deal with their trauma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I, that's not what I'm skilled at. I'm not skilled at very many things right. at all, in fact. Uh, we should find skilled people to go do this. It's also, within their, anyway. it's also within their interest to retrain them to have another tax revenue if they don't. And these people just all die. They'll lose out on that money. So with that, agree to disagree, they say. Uh, you, uh, you make your way towards the ferry. You see that same, uh, what did Skender call it? I was going to say, I was just going to say I take Old Scully as a Old souvenir. Scully? <laughs> <laughs> souvenir we're of our taking this. We're, we're taking, taking this. this. We're confiscating this. We're taking it. <laughs> And you, uh, you hop into uh, the ferry and you, and you just push off and you just say, fuck it, we're taking the ferry. They can figure it out. Um, and as you're just about to get to the other side of the river, you look and you see standing on the banks, looking at you is Ornegard Corza, the little boy whose oh. applesauce you killed. Oh, come on. And he's just watching the four of you leave. Having destroyed his future, the pr- the, uh, the 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 pr- professor goes tips her hat. Yeah, so does Karzer. <laughs> <laughs> he just turns and walks away, and uh, you start the trek back. However, as you're dealing with all this stuff of leaving Ravenmore, you all know that the Founders Feast takes place the night before the full moon. Mm. And so you all kind of know the elephant in the room. That your buddy Karazor is uh, going to turn into a werebear at the sight of the full moon. And you now have uh, Wolfsbane to be able to hopefully prevent it from happening next full moon. But the inevitable is going to happen tonight. What precautions, if any or plans, or what are you going to take? Because there's really no inn you can get to. You're just going to be camping in the wild. Listen, uh, I I know what's about to happen, and it probably isn't going to be pretty. I'm just going to take myself as far away from here as I can as I can make it, and I'll I'll, I'll strip myself of all my equipment and and just uh, hope for the best. Hope I don't find my way back here. Hopefully. Hopefully it'll be all right. And then I'll, I'll, when my senses return, I'll come back to you in the morning. Karazor. I'm going to talk like the professor because my voice is going to be tired. Okay. Karazor, don't be ridiculous. Who would murder you if you threatened innocent lives? We're your well, friends. We would do I, that for you. I know. I know. I just, <laughs> I'm worried for you. I'm worried for you. Oh, and for you, me. You have... Your, your, your heart is too kind, Karazor. Well, that's the first time anyone's ever said that. And it's not true. But I am going to leave. So, everyone, please take care of yourselves. If, if, if you see me coming, just, just don't hesitate. Just, uh, d- just tie me up or something. Goodbye. 
<laughs> we could tie you up now. I, uh, that's oh, what I was oh. going to suggest. That might hurt when I changed. I'm going to leave. <laughs> so as you get... Uh, you, you know what, actually, realize, right. You do realize <laughs> you're going to do horrible things, right? Yes. You know that, right? That you're right. going to traipse through the wilderness, killing... Wait, no, no, no. Children this is and this is a great idea. Families. No, no, no. You just, know that. just take the keys and stay in the mayor's house at Ravenmoor <laughs> and just go to town. I'm not going finish back the there, job. No, no but then no, I just finish there. the job. Uh, I'll finish the job later when I level up. Great. Look, I think I think we're right <laughs> the first time. Right. Just tie me up and uh, and leave me be, and, and hopefully I can uh, weather the night and uh, won't hurt anyone of you. Raven, over the course <laughs> of our many journeys together. You have had several good ideas, but this was your best. <laughs> <laughs> we leave him in a raven war and the, let him indiscriminately kill every single person left in the town. All right, fine. Then we start from scratch. I'm going to Ravenmore. Goodbye. <laughs> and he goes off to Ravenmore. The best part is. Halfway through the day, he, he turns back and is like, just stay here. And he goes to Ravenmore. <laughs> the best part is, it's the perfect you crime. Your sword. I don't need it. <laughs> He, he's going to have claws and teeth to eat them all with. No one will so ever camp, know. You camp about half a day's journey from Ravenmoor, and uh, <laughs> car's door is not there. Oh, my God. The next morning, you're he's breaking. He's like, I forgot no, my no, no, wait, wait. He just says oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. So uh, I mean, at some point during the night, like after you're asleep, uh, the professor, uh, like you feel something like nudging you awake. <gasps> hey, who's there? Hey, look, don't scream. Good start. Who is this? And if you look up, you see a bear like hovering over you. <laughs> Karazor? <laughs> yeah, no, it's me, Karazor. Get me. I'm a bear now. Look at this. And he looks up and he's like, I got fur. I mean, I had fur, but it's like a different kind of fur. And I'm like bigger and... Oh, boy, I feel so different. Has, has anything else changed? I mean, yeah, look, just look. And he points down at his, below his waistline. He says, yeah, look there, that's totally different. I never saw him like that before. I'm a bear. Look at this. And get this. I, yes. was, I was reading about it. We're lawful good. We're bears are lawful good. I feel totally different, like inside, too, as well as outside. <laughs> So, uh, that is can I get you anything, or uh, can I, I don't know, any favors you need done? I don't know. Lawful you, good. I don't know what it's not. Can I flush, fluff your pillow? Did fluff you ever make it back to, to Ravenmore by nah, any chance? No, because I started going there, and I was like, yeah, I was excited. Like, I'm going to kill all these innocent people. And then I, whoa, I turned into a bear, and I'm like, you know what? Live and let live. And then I come back in because I'm so excited. I'm a fucking bear. <laughs> what, would, what would you like to do? What are, your, what are your bear instincts telling you to do now? You know, it's funny. Uh, I don't know if you know, if you got a lion on any, like, grubs. Uh, or a honey, maybe. Ooh, salmon. <laughs> salmon would hit the spot if I could get... I don't know. I'm just famished right now. Would you like <laughs> to go to the river? Okay, yeah. You know what? I'll go back to the river. There might be uh, some kind of pike or something in there. I'll go. Uh, I'll forage. And then, uh, you know, in the morning, hopefully I turn back, I'll come back. All right? But it's, it's crazy, right? It's insane. It's, it's unbelievable. Like it. Okay, I just wanted to let you, you, I know, you tell the story the best. So I wanted to tell you. But I'll, 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 I'll see you in the morning. Anyway. See you in the morning. All right. So, so as you're breaking camp the next morning, uh, all of a sudden, uh, <laughs> Karsor stumbles up. With a basket full of salmon, a couple of jars of honey, a pig, a donkey, and a tiger. <laughs> yeah, uh, I he looks to, totally uh, normal now, but he's got a whole yeah, thing of salmon. I don't, I don't want this now. I have no <laughs> desire to eat any of this. I don't know why I, I gathered it. Karazor, you were actually quite delightful as a really? werebear. Yes. Oh, all right. Well, that's good to not know. Th not that you're not delightful now, but as a werebear, you were... I just, you were such a lovely man. All right. what, you spoke with him? I did. He came and nudged me awake. <laughs> you did not nudge me awake? You know, I didn't. I would love to have talked to the good bear. 
I just assumed our conversation would have woken you. And that if it hadn't, you didn't want to be part of the role play. <laughs> well, bears are very Brilliant. quiet. Sorry, bears are, are in, uh, incredibly quiet when they when they want to be. <laughs> Carazor, maybe we shouldn't cure you. I was just going to say, perhaps we, we have this wolf's blood, but if you are such an enjoyable character when you don't use it, maybe don't use it. Well, it would give me something to do with all these grubs and fish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think and you're next, right. Next time we can be prepared and we'll, and we'll cook them for you. Ah, Ahead I like that. I right, like that. Yeah, let, let, me, uh, let me pitch something. Bearazor. Once a month. How about that? <laughs> Bearazor. Ladies and gentlemen, one night only. One night Bearazor. only. Bearazor. 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 <laughs> Two drink minimum. <laughs> Two drink I like minimum. It. I like it. Uh, normally you would get a DC 20 will save to see if you remember anything that happened so please roll a, a will save <laughs> okay. to see if you remember exactly what happened a to natural you natural one I don't remember natural anything one. <laughs> it's, a, it's lost in time but luckily the crystal I'm ghost remembers uh, yeah. <laughs> the professor remembers <laughs> the professor is going to have to is maybe uh, considering writing a new book about this <laughs> well, there we go. why did we have him leave camp he was so agreeable <laughs> Uh, eventually, you know, it takes another week or so, uh, you know, uh, you make your way back to the drunken dog just mm, outside of right. Magnamar and you return to find, uh, Jaminda Anarchy, uh, still sitting there nursing gin and tonics and she rises in anticipation when she sees you, um, but can immediately see in your eyes that you have been through hell. You sit down and just begin recounting the events of what happened in Ravenmoor and, of course, the fate of her cousin. We crossfade from there uh, to see the four of you walking through the streets of Magnamar with Jaminda at your side, right into a government building uh, where you uh, return uh, 500 of the 720 gold pieces you found uh, to the... Uh, you know, the tax department of Magnamar. Uh, and clearly word of your deeds has preceded you. Either Jaminda told tales at school or like people were listening at the bar and it became a whole thing. And so you're greeted with cheers upon your arrival. Like, this is a big deal. 500 gold pieces may not seem like a lot, but like it balances out the books. It makes Jaminda look good. And, uh, you know, it's a win-win for everybody. And so the city of Magnamar... Uh, agrees to not only pay you the 200 gold pieces each that Jaminda promised you, but it's allowing you to keep the 500 gold pieces <gasps> as a token Whoa. of their appreciation. Nice. Uh, oh, that's so, awesome. Uh, yeah, so 200 uh, each plus 500 for the group. Uh, and they say, along with anything else, you may have recovered uh, and liberated in the process. And uh, the cheers just continue uh, as you stand there awkwardly, I imagine. Uh, how are, uh, do each of you react to this newfound fame? Braven strides directly over to Jamenda in the midst of everything as everyone else is reveling and is about to tell you what they're doing and grabs her by the hand, puts the signet ring of her brother-in-law in his hand and says, it wasn't pretty. But he's at rest now. And now, I can finally be who I've always wanted to be, now that I'm welcome here. And he looks at all the rest of the crowd around him, the smiling, they've heard of the stories of Braven, the way he killed the mare very quickly that turned into a mosquito. And he maybe foolishly takes off his cap of human guys, and now there's a hobgoblin in the middle of the bar. Kill it! <laughs> 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 Daggers just stabbing down, doesn't. <laughs> Remember, you're in the government building. Oh, government building. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the hobgoblins standing there, and they're all like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, Crystal Ghost, Professor, I should say. I, I too have a confession to make. <laughs> I am not actually a professor. <gasps> I have two master's degrees, but no PhD. 
<laughs> never finished your dissertation? I never finished my dissertation. I was ABD, as they say. All but dissertation. And yet I did, I did, however, re- get recruited into several teaching jobs. So I allowed people to call me professor, and this shames me greatly. From now on, I shall be known as adjunct instructor. <laughs> Maxine Metro. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm to <laughs> These are all the secrets I have. I have bared my soul to you all. <laughs> Alfonso. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as we are bearing secrets. <laughs> 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 and he like wafts his hair back, his greasy black hair, like wafts it back, strikes a a handsome pose, and he's like, <laughs> "I am so you will never know how deeply grateful I am for your generosity in handing over these funds that were due to you back to us. <laughs> this money means more to me than you could ever know. I have been so poor for so long." And now I am on my way, truly, to having the money I need to destroy my mother's life. <laughs> <laughs> and he just smiles. <laughs> I mean, as long as we are all being honest. He <laughs> 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 is a horrible person. You would be, you would approve. Uh, trust me. <laughs> Karazor? Karazor adjusts the little glasses on his nose. <laughs> and he says, Says, I too have a secret that I bear. <laughs> but allow me to bear my secret. I'm a bear. <laughs> and if you like me now, just wait till you see me in 29 days. <laughs> I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book about it, and I shall submit it as my dissertation. Finally. Earning that PhD. <laughs> <laughs> the secret unveiled shall be resolved at last. <laughs> <laughs> and you all level up to level four. <gasps> oh, <laughs> yeah, dude. And uh, nice. <laughs> as you're all bearing your souls to the, uh, the tax collectors. <laughs> and f- from there, as they're all just like, Cheering you on, uh, we see uh, a bunch of cutscenes as time moves forward, and you see that over the next few weeks, word spreads quickly of uh, what was going on in Ravenmore. Alfonso, your desire, what you told the village is like, we're going to let them know what's happening and let them deal with it. Well, deal with it, they do, and the Church of Desna gets involved, and they are swift to react once they find out that this used to be a place of Desna worship because there's not many of those left right. around the world. So if there's a place that they can try and rebuild, they're going to do it. So reconsecrate then we, that chapel yeah, and everything. So yeah. We see like half a dozen or so missionaries uh, traveling the same road that you traveled uh, to go to Ravenmore. And they arrive in Ravenmore, not unlike you did, and quickly set about the difficult task of repairing the villagers' faith and uh, the village's overall infrastructure because it's a town without a leader now. Um, you see them preaching the true word of Desna, tearing down the gossamer-winged uh, statues and effigies, replacing all the spears with star knives. And they're like, oh, this is a star knife, not a spear. No, no, just teaching them the basics, helping to rebuild the chapel. More time passes and winter comes and uh, improvements in town are noticeable. And the snow-covered village looks almost picturesque where it probably looked uh, foreboding and uninviting uh, in previous winters for generations. The blight has clearly been banished and the death of the cult has brought about the banishment of that blight and the villager's fate is now once again their own. Under the guidance of these several helpful helpful priests of Desna, eager to repair the damage that several generations of infestation have created. There is hope that Ravenmore may one day soon grow into a healthy village. Meanwhile, you've been poring over the uh, book, the Kriegler book that you found. And I imagine you're all at a bar one night 
and the adjunct instructor Maxine Vetro has uh, taken it to some of her friends and together they have sussed it out and she's ready to present her findings and so you're at a bar uh, maybe you're back at the Lean To Tavern where it all started um, and you start to dig into the dark history of Ravenmore. Similar what to what you heard when Shel de Pescu and the other young women uh, approached your table at the Founders' Feast, uh, you find that there was indeed a woman named Iola Kriegler, a priestess of Desna who went on a vision quest to save her village from starvation. That much is true. But what happened next is a long-guarded family secret. For alas, the visions she chose to follow came not from Desna, came not from her goddess, but from an ancient enemy of Desna's, the god of parasites and stagnation, Glondur. Eola fell victim to these dark visions and came upon a strange commune of Glondur's followers deep in the Churlwood, from whom she learned a ritual that would ensure good harvests in return for giving the spawn of Glondur a place to safely grow inside of her body and inside of the bodies of her descendants and her village. So accompanied by two faceless stalkers dis disguised as human druid advisors, Eola returned to Ravenmore, a changed woman. Oh. While her flock worried about her, they could not dispute that the miracles she worked under Glondura's influence uh, and the harvest that year and every year since yielded enough bounty to keep the villagers well provided for and safe. Eola, now a priestess of Glondur, recruited select members of the village into her little inner circle of allies, forming a hidden cult within the populace uh, who helped mask the uh, truth from everyone else. And as Ravenmore grew increasingly isolated from the big cities, the strange beliefs and traditions in town became more and more distorted, and the worship of Desna grew increasingly perverted into a mockery of her faith. Throughout the generation, those two faceless stalkers have dwelt among the citizens of Ravenmore, but their truth of their existence was only known to the cultists. From time to time, certain other villagers would suspect that some of the foulness, some uh, some sort of foulness, was lurking amid the townsfolk, because hideously deformed babies periodically arose from the unions of two apparently healthy villagers. How could this uh, misformed uh, aberration of a baby come from two uh, healthy villagers? Because the infants were actually a result of unions in which the father had been secretly replaced for one reason or another by one of these faceless stalkers. So throughout time, hmm. these faceless stalkers were just like, uh, you know, popping into So who into was the other appearance. one? Who was the other faceless stalker? Well, it was we're the getting kid! To that. It was the when kid! Such, when such uh, half-breeds were born, the cult swiftly moved to cover up the issue with stories of stillbirths. Some would survive, some were not. Obviously, you found the bones of others, and some grew into those creatures that they would call the misbegotten. And those were the creatures that jumped out at you oh. in the shed. Mm. Some, the, you know, the, the union of a faceless stalker and a perfectly healthy oh. human. Eola eventually paid for her bargain of the devil uh, when her body gave birth to one of the Gossamer King's spawn, but not before giving birth in the preceding years to several children of her own. So before she gave birth to the same thing that came out of uh, Kriegler's body, she had a bunch of natural-born children. Um, the Kriegler line would then rule Ravenmore for decades, both as mayors or secret spiritual leaders, and eventually every single one of them bore the Gossamer King's spawn in a gory ritualistic death in the wee hours of the morning, just like you witness. Now and then, a particularly astute villager would discover the truth, but the cult was always quick to silence such folks before they could spread the word. And so, over the years and over the generations, Ravenmore started to stagnate. Through chance and accident, the Kriegler line dwindled down to a single member, Andretti Kriegler, a man who had recently been forced to admit to the rest of the cult that he was sterile. Without the ability to perpetuate his line and going through three wives that he blamed for his sterility and disposed of, he knew that the line of the Gossamer King spawn would come to an end as well if he couldn't figure his shit out. So he was granted all these visions that he assumed were visions from Glondor, 
And he said, I'm going to let this happen. If I let this happen, the town of Ravenmore would not only suffer, uh, and I would be uh, dishonoring my family line, but my immortal soul would be denied its proper place in the Gossamer King's court in the afterlife. And so he began researching a cure for his condition. He hoped that by performing a number of fertility rituals centered around blood sacrifices that came to him in visions, he could cure his ster- sterility and father, father children to carry on the Gossamer King's legacy. Initially, the mayor intended to use his own followers as sacrifices, but he worried that doing so would test the limits of the non-cultist faith and even worse, make them suspect that there was more to their beloved dream tender than they were led to believe. Hmm. The arrival of a tax collector named Elias Kyle, less than 24 hours before the ritual was scheduled, struck the mayor as a divine sign. And though Elias struggled and managed to kill one of the faceless stalker allies, in the end, his sacrifice went exactly as Kriegler had planned, down to luring new sacrifices to town for the next (sighs) ritual, the four of you. After all, as Mayor Kriegler wrote in one of his last entries, what better sacrifice than non-believers? Just as he said to you. Uh, Crystal Ghost closes the Kriegler book. And a young man with a close-cropped haircut and sharp features uh, approaches your table uh, cautiously. uh, Pardon me, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt. uh, Word of your... uh, exploits and success at Ravenmoor has uh, obviously spread throughout the area and um, well I, I represent a noble family that is in need of help and then you're all struck by that same familiar feeling of deja vu as the man echoes the words of Tamara Fenwick who approached you at this very same tavern what seems like ages ago as he leans in and says, may I ask, are you adventurers for hire? (laughs) Blackout. (laughs) That's it? Yeah! You did it! Nice work. Nice work. Wow. Wow. Well wow. done. What a story. What that was a awesome. story. Isn't that great? Brandon yeah. Hodge, the Feast of Ravenmore. Run it for your friends who don't watch this show and then tell them to watch the show. Uh, I think it's one of the <laughs> best modules uh, I've ever read. And we, I think really we, good. we had a lot of fun with it. I was uh, pulling up Desna on the Pathfinder wiki in the background because you. Were, I didn't know that like she was in decline or there was the, the, that was interesting to me. So I was just like reading about that. There is an amazing piece of artwork of desna rebuking the awakened glonder on that page uh everyone should go to the pathfinder wiki and check it out i'll send it out in the uh oh, yeah. after party too but i'll send it to nice. you guys in the skype oh now. yeah look at that it's beautiful question before we sign off do you want the b ending yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i thought or is that an, or is that an after party thing Oh, that's so cruel. That's so cruel. I thought about it. I thought about it, but I already teased it. All right, it's quick. Yes. It's quick. I you yeah. Know, tell in, them. The, in the event of a of a TPK, this is the uh, the B ending, and I love it. It's so perfect. Um, <sighs> is it Troy quick or is it actually quick? No, it's actually quick. Um, okay. Uh, let me see. I'm just gonna find it. I have so many notes. I can't believe how many pages of notes I have for this one adventure. <laughs> okay so uh had you all been tpk right um mm. it's similar to what it reminded me of uh obviously when we played silent tide that's how it ended in a tpk and i was just like in the moment had to be like, ah, and i love that ending that was uh, you know sometimes you just can't plan it the way it you guys feel like you really fucked up in absalom <laughs> yeah, you need some glue but anyways um <laughs> if uh had you failed the fuck is it Okay. All right. The sun rises on the city of Ravenmore, and we see villagers running about town, dragging tables and decorations oh. to the festival grounds in anticipation of this month's Founders' Feast. Amazing. They're carrying stuff out of the buildings, and they're setting up, and they're all running about, all excited. And from behind, we see four sturdy-looking men and women dressed differently than the villagers we just saw running around, approaching a white manor house on a hill. 
The door opens on the porch, and we see a man in a white suit step forward, but the shadow of the roof overhang on the porch you, makes it kind of hard to see his face. Our view then uh, changes to just like looking over his shoulder to see the four uh, men and women approaching. Um, we don't see his face, and we just hear his voice. It's like, greetings, strangers. What uh, brings you to Ravenmore? One of the four people speaks up, and it's like, well, we are from the city of Magnamar. Uh, apparently, there was a, an accounting error, and uh, the town owes uh, 500 gold pieces and uh, back taxes. It's one of uh, a couple of things we're here to discuss and the man all dressed in white still with his back to us says 500 gold pieces well i'm sorry to hear that we usually don't make errors like that around there but mistakes happen all the time here in ravenmore i tell you what you have caught us on a rather busy day uh, today is our monthly founders feast and uh I have much to do, but uh, you are welcome as my guest to the, both the festival and, and you can even stay in my home. We are very welcome in town. Uh, let me finish with my preparations and uh, tomorrow morning I can uh, gather up your money and, and give you what's owed. Uh, uh, that, 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 that sounds good. Um, if you don't mind, though, we do have a few questions. He's like, well, sure you do. If you don't mind walking and talking, uh, I'm happy to help you in any way I can answer any questions you may have. Uh, allow me to just grab something uh, from my home, and, and, and maybe you could accompany me to the festival grounds. And they're like, well, all right. And he walks inside, leaving the door ajar so as not to rouse suspicion, walks up to a mirror, and he's, he enters the light, we see. That is Mayor Kriegler, and he leans forward. And we see just at the side of his mouth a crack in his skin where a fleshy mosquito larvae pulsates through the open wound. Oh. And he just like stares in the mirror and bites down hard and clenches his fists until the flesh sews up over the hole, sealing the larvae underneath his skin. And you see it pulsate for a moment before it recedes underneath. Oh. He, he pulls out a white handkerchief and just dabs it ever so demurely and then walks outside, closing the door behind him. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's the that's Scooby-Doo uh, TPK ending. <laughs> Folks, we'll see you at the after party. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, Thank you for having me. Season premiere next week. Season oh premiere. God. Another season premiere. Love it. Love it.